City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday the 8th of September 2020. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. Acknowledgement of country. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who are present today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parkland, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. Will all present please stand in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air. Thank you, members. Please be seated. us to item five on tonight's agenda. Um, there are no apologies or leaves of absence tonight. Um, item number six is the confirmation of minutes from the 11th of August and the 13th of August, um, excepting there is a correction to the minutes. I look for someone to move. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Kira. Members, any comments, suggestions, changes? Deputy Lord Mayor, sum up. Okay. To the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Um, there are no deputations uh, this evening, nor are there any petitions, uh, which takes us to council business. I note that there are many items or several items on the agenda tonight that are for noting. Um, so I will actually uh, look to, my, to, uh, to the chamber to approve on block those that members are comfortable with. And please, if you could um, raise your hand if there's anything you would like me to withdraw. So we have 9.1, which is the advice of the Adelaide Parklands Authority. 9.2, which is the recommendation of the Reconciliation Committee. 10.1, which is the King Lee <coughs> Park, it, uh, Itapinya Maintenance Storage Building. Item 12, uh, sorry, 10.2, which is the quarterly forward procurement report Q2 2020-2021. Councillor. Item 10.3, which is the provo uh, proposed event in the Adelaide Parklands Archies 2020. <coughs> Item 10.4, which is the draft Adelaide Oval CLMP for um, management plan, sorry, community land management plan. Item 10.5, which is the City of Adelaide submission for the Green Industry South Australia, South Australia Waste Management Strategy 2020 to 2025 and Food Waste Strategy Consultation Drafts. Thank you, members. Item 10.6, which is the Corporate Climate Change Risk Assessment. Item 10.7, which is the Peace Park Town Clerks Walk Tree Succession Plan in Red Gum Park. Councillor Martin. Item 
In point eight, which is the asset accounting policy and fixed asset guidelines. Item 10.9, which is the progress of motions by elected members. So members, I will look to the floor for someone to move on block item 9.2, 10.1, 10.3, 10.5, 10.6, 10.7, 10.8, 10.9, 10.11, 10.12, 10.13, 10.14, 10.15, 10.16, 10.17, 10.18, 10.19, 10.20, 10.21, 10.22, 10.23, 10.24, 10.25, 10.26, 10.27, 10.28, 10.29, 10.30, 10.31, 10.32, 10.33, 10.34, 10.35, 10.36, 10.37, 10.38, 10.39, 10.40, 10.41, 10.42, 10.43, 10.44, 10.45, 10.46, 10.47, 10.48, 10.49, 10.50, 10.51, 10.52, 10.53, 10.54, 10.55, 10.56, 10.57, 10.58, 10.59, 10.60, 10.61, 10.62, 10.63, 10.64, 10.65, 10.66, 10.67, 10.68, 10.69, 10.70, 10.71, 10.72, 10.73, 10.74, 10.75, 10.76, 10.77, 10.78, 10.79, 10.80, 10.81, 10.82, 10.83, 10.84, 10.85, 10.86, 10.87, 10.88, 10.89, 10.90, 10.91, 10.92, 10.93, 10.94, 10.95, 10.96, 10.97, 10.98, 10.99, 10.10, 10.11, 10.12, 10.13, 10.14, 10.15, 10.16, 10.17, 10.18, 10.19, 10.20, 10.21, 10.22, 10.23, 10.24, 10.25, 10.26, 10.27, 10.28, 10.29, 10.30, 10.31, 10.32, 10.33, 10.34, 10.35, 10.36, 10.37, 10.38, 10.39, 10.40, 10.41, 10.42, 10.43, 10.44, 10.45, 10.46, 10.47, 10.48, 10.49, 10.50, 10.51, 10.52, 10.53, 10.54, 10.55, 10.56, 10.57, 10.58, 10.59, 10.60, 10.61, 10.62, 10.63, 10.64, 10.65, 10.66, 10.67, 10.68, 10.69, 10.70, 10.71, 10.72, 10.73, 10.74, 10.75, 10.76, 10.77, 10.78, 10.79, 10.80, 10.91, 10.92, 10.93, 10.94, 10.95, 10.96, 10.97, 10.98, 10.99, 10.100, 10.101, 10.102, 10.103, 10.104, 10.105, 10.106, 10.107, 10.108, 10.109, 10.110, 10.111, 10.112, 10.113, 10.114, 10.115, 10.116, 10.117, 10.118, 10.119, 10.120, 10.121, 10.122, 10.123, 10.124, 10.125, 10.126, 10.127, 10.128, 10.129, 10.130, 10.131, 10.132, 10.133, 10.134, 10.135, 10.136, 10.137, 10.138, 10.139, 10.140, 10.151, 10.152, 10.153, 10.154, 10.155, 10.156, 10.157, 10.158, 10.159, 10.160, 10.170, 10.171, 10.172, 10.173, 10.174, 10.175, 10.176, 10.177, 10.178, 10.179, 10.180, 10.181, 10.182, 10.183, 10.184, 10.185, 10.186, 10.187, 10.188, 10.189, 10.190, 10.191, 10.192, 10.193, 10.194, 10.195, 10.196, 10.197, 10.198, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.199, 10.
uh, when the matter comes to council, uh, provide the advice about what the current policy is. Uh, furthermore, um, the, uh, the proposal, and I acknowledge, by the way, that that car parking has been reduced from 150 to 112, but nevertheless, it does show, it illustrates a car park for 112 car parks, uh, and it will be, according to the illustrations supplied to APLA, and which passed without comment, uh, the only thing which is visible passing to Lewis Cohen Drive. You won't even see the building, but you will see the car park. Uh, and so uh, I, I am surprised that our principal policy advisor is absolutely silent on that. Um, it does surprise me. Um, as you know, the members of APLA are appointed by us and by the state, and I think it is a uh, skills-based board. Uh, this has come before some of the members before, um, and uh, they are going noting the community engagement findings and supporting that. Any other comments, members? If not, I'll go back to the move to sum up, Lord Mayor. Thank you. Uh, members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, members, I have item 10.2, which is the quarterly forward re uh, procurement report, Q2. Um, just one moment, I'll just find my papers. There we go, I'm looking for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Knoll. I'm a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Knoll, did you wish to speak? Councillor Abraham today. Um, Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, Lord Mayor, um, uh, may I just ask a, a couple of questions? Um, noting that this, of course, is the first time that the elected body has seen this request for $13.5 million worth of expenditure, uh, and which hasn't been discussed at committee, rather just advised. Um, well, I wasn't even advised. This is the first time we've seen it. Um, the highest risk item is Adelaide Free Wi-Fi, which has a price tag here in these documents of $1.8 million. Um, but there is no description of what it is. It just says Adelaide Free Wi-Fi. Um, given that this is one of the most sensitive issues among ratepayers and uh, visitors, um, what, what is proposed? See you go. Oh, thanks, Ian. Um, through the Lord Mayor, thanks for the question, Councillor. The $1.8 million is um, 900000 for 2021 and 900000 for 21-22, so it's over two financial years. The Adelaide Free Wi-Fi 2.0, so the next version of the current Wi-Fi, um, aims to utilise 10 gig Adelaide as the backbone to create an uncontested service um, of Wi-Fi in Adelaide. The current system it's probably past its use by date, but it also suffers from congestion. Almost too many people using it, so it buffers. It's a bit like too many people come home and your Netflix doesn't work. Um, so the new, using 10 gig as a backbone is an opportunity to create a more seamless and better service for the uh, business community, um, international students, people who have, uh, some cases has been um, disconnected a little bit from society through COVID. So there's a range of potential applications across the CBD in North Adelaide. So if this is piggyback, piggybacking off uh, 10 gig, um, is this going to raise any issues about security? Because I know that uh, security agencies, government departments are reluctant to use 10 gig because it uses Huawei components. It, is our Adelaide free Cap Wi-Fi network Council. also going to rely on those Huawei components? Um, again, and just a reminder through the chair, please. Um, CEO. Sorry, through the Lord Mayor. Um, my understanding is that it's being scoped out at the moment um, and we could use a range of different providers so I wouldn't necessarily need to include Huawei, could use other equipment. Okay, um, I'm sorry. Thank you. Just got it absorbed in the subject matter. Um, uh, so it won't be using Huawei, is that correct, Lord Mayor? I think that question's been answered that we can actually choose what we what we what switches we need to use ceo is there anything you want to answer there just back through the lord mayor um it's all subject to scoping so we can include what we want or what we don't want mm -hmm. uh, i'm confused now lord Council, mayor. perhaps if there's a series of questions we can take those on notice no 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 I, i'm i'm confused now uh, just a very simple fact um if, yeah. if it is piggybacking off 10 gig which uses embedded in huawei and Free Wi-Fi comes off that. 
then it's still using Huawei components, isn't it? Uh, I'm more than happy to answer. Um, through the Lord Mayor again, happy to have a more technical conversation around this offline if we need to, but 10 gig cable, TPG cable, is not Huawei cable. It's high-speed fibre optic cable, about 120 kilometres being laid out through the city and the CBD. It's what that can plug into. Can be a Huawei product, can be a Cisco product, can be a Dell product, can be a range of different other providers that it plugs into. Okay, and um, it's lower risk, but there's a proposal in here about the supply of cars and light commercial vehicles for $2.5 million up to 2025. Um, given our commitment to carbon emission reductions, what is um, proposed with regard to reducing our reliance on fossil fuel vehicles? See you. Through you, Lord Mayor. That is something we've, we've been talking about. Thanks, Clinton. Thanks, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, the, um, Ford procurement report re refers to uh, the next three years of proposed um, standing offer contracts um, just to support the replacement of uh, fleet vehicles and, and light trucks. Uh, we're still embarking on uh, meeting the requirements of the plan set out for carbon neutrality around the purchase of those vehicles. So that's taken into account in those purchasing agreements. Okay, thank you. And if I, Lord Mayor, if I could just ask the CEO in future, could, could we have this discussion at the committee instead of council? Otherwise, it could just go You through. are very welcome to ask all of those questions at council because otherwise I'll start taking them on note of because that's actually what committee is for. Sorry, committee, not council. That is what committee is for, for us to ask those questions. So, uh, so you're happy for that to go to committee in future? Yes. Three Lord Mayor. Yes, we will in the future provide that to committee, prior to committee council. Thank you. Um, Members. Oh, Councillor Sims, you had a question and Deputy Lord Mayor after that. Thanks, um, Lord Mayor. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, to administration. Um, also in reference to uh, the economic development and sustainability line and the Adelaide Wi-Fi, references direct negotiation. Who are the, the parties that we are um, negotiating with? Can we able to get some advice on that? CEO. Thanks, Ian. Back through the Lord Mayor and the Council. Um, we'll be looking, obviously, TPG Vodafone is a partner on Tingy Adelaide, so we would probably look at a marking, a mark testing that included them. So they're the only, they're the only partner. Uh, well, they, they run the 10 gigs. So if we're going to leverage the 10 gig backbone, we, it was always envisaged that Wi Fi would run off the 10 gig system. The, the value proposition will still test whether it's a value proposition back from TPG, if that makes sense to you. So we'll get, we'll get some third party analysis of the value proposition they provide to us through a procurement process. So, just to clarify, so what we're voting on in terms of um, the direct negotiation is for you to engage with TPG. 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 Can I just clarify through you, Lord Mayor? We're not asking you to vote on these matters. This is just a report for you to note. Ah, right. There are a number of processes that will go through as these progress. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Sims, Deputy Lord Mayor, and then Councillor Moran. Just following from, from following on from Councillor Martin's questions. Um, how many uh, sort of defence contractors, security companies, and what have you, people with security concerns, are using the Adelaide free Wi-Fi? Because I think that is a concern if they are. CEO. Through you, Lord. Now, I'm not sure we can, answer, can that. answer that. Um, no. we, be we better take that on notice. Mm -hmm. I, I suggest we offer them free advice if they're using Adelaide free Wi-Fi. Thank you for that rhetorical question, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, on the same topic. Um, I, having been on the previous council, always understood that Huawei was uh, involved in our 10 gigabit uh, rollout and that it was uh, involved in the Wi Fi. And I've had many, um, I, not, I don't really understand the technology here, but uh, many um, businesses have, um, you don't have to be a defence business to want privacy, a medical business. Um, and so forth uh, have very sensitive files and they've made it very clear to me they won't use it. Um, now I haven't made a comment because I'm not, but you're telling me that we're not using Huawei um, and so we're not using it now, we can choose in the future. When will that future date come? Because I'll strongly suggest we don't. 
not making any accusations about Huawei that haven't been put in the print media, but it is a definite disincentive to be using our 10 gigabit. Um, I know many businesses that won't use it because of that. I think there's and different connections. This is about the free Wi-Fi yeah, as no, opposed to the 10 gig connections. Yeah, no, but you just said they're connected. And we have so said in the panel, we have like said in media to... releases that we use Huawei, and we've been criticised for that in the in the print media. So I, I'm confused that now we're saying we've got really nothing to do with it. Which is it? Three Lord Mayor, as there seems to be some uncertainty, I'm happy to provide advice to Council um, after the meeting regarding the current arrangements, just for clarity. So happy to take that on. So we're not using Huawei now but we can choose to use them or not use them in the future. Is that, that's what I understood Mr. Hill to say. Ian, can you clarify? Just through the Lord Mayor, just to, to clarify, so TPG Vodafone is the telco partner. The vendor, so the business, the small business in North Adelaide or the CBD has the option to use through TPG a range of products. That product could be a Huawei product, Councillor. I oh, so it's the at the point of um, it's, the, it's the business that gets to choose through the through the vendor through the it's through. It's a shame we kept saying Huawei when we were rolling all this out, isn't it? Because that's really stuck in people's mind. But so, I can understand now. So the vendor um, has the option. Is what I'm trying to say. Understand. Thank you. And uh, Councillor Moran, if there's any other questions, we'll take them through to see I distribute to all members. Um, members, if there's no other questions on that, I'll go back to the mover to sum up. Councillor Knoll? Summed up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, that takes us, oh, uh, that takes us to 10.4, which is the draft CLMP, Deputy Lord Mayor. Look for a second though. Um, Thank you. Was Councillor Martin, were you seconding? No. Councillor Knoll. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I just have a, uh, an alternative motion to move. Um, given members have already noted the APRA advice, it just incorporates the APRA advice into this motion. Um, I don't feel the need to speak on it. So. Yes. So I'm just checking, do we have a seconder for the alternate recommendation? Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor. I'll reserve my right. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Members, I have Councillor Martin and Councillor Moran. Could you quickly remind me what the APRA advice was concerning this? Um, it is at 9.1, Councillor Moran, um, just in front of you. So uh, the main changes were the uh, inclusion of a Ghana cultural monitor, um, and there were some uh, alterations to the word, uh, changing the word Indigenous to Aboriginal, as that is the preference in terms of um, how we address uh, First Nations. Um, there was uh, a correction in terms of native title, and there was a clarification around um, no more than eight single day events as opposed to eight events and inclusion of a reference to compliance with the APLEM, which is the Adelaide Parklands Event Management Plan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I just wanted to check whether it didn't have an alteration to the uh, time of consultation. No, it did not. Is the, uh, could I ask, is, am I correct in saying that's 21 days? Uh, I would have to ask the advice on that. I believe it is. But yep, just through Lord Mayor, that would be correct. Thank you, uh, Well, I, <clears throat> sorry, I, don't, I got beaten to the punch for the amendment. I think 21 days on such an important thing is um, quite sh a short time. It's a statutory length, but it doesn't mean it has to be the maximum length. <clears throat> I would like to increase that to double that time and ask the mover if he could incorporate that. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you want to increase um, an extension of the consultation time? How long would you like to make that, Councillor Moran? Sorry, just 42 days. Please. 42 days. Six weeks. Good. Um, a six week consultation. Um, and so I'll just check with the seconder, Council Cross. Were you happy with that? Thank you. So I do need the leave of the meeting, members. If I can have a quick show of hand, you're happy for that to be accepted as part of the alternate recommendation. Thank you. Uh, Councillor, um, any other speakers? Councillor Martin. Yeah, look, um, I wonder whether the mover might also 
be prepared to include uh, in the recommendation um, that uh, we also advise all business and residential premises within 500 metres of um, Montefiore Hill. I, th I think that's actually part of the consultation process, but... Oh, good, okay. Oh, well, that's fine. But how do you mean inform the flag goes out? Yeah, just saying there's a consultation on um, go to www. Oh, I thought you meant door numbers or something. No, no, it's just a slip in the oh, yeah. Can I check, please, uh, CEO, is that in terms of the consultation process? Clinton? Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, so the consultation process process would actually be statewide through the Orsay website. Um, in terms of door-to-door um, -door contact, we typically would um, extend that far with our consultation material anyway, councillors. Okay, so um, I'm happy, that's fine. Uh, my request is redundant. Okay, just a couple of quick questions, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, this proposed plan for Adelaide Oval uh, 2, in something of a new description, by the way, uh, the Village Green, uh, it says page uh, 13, 49 of ours. Um, um, it says that its character will be uh, retained by the absence of built form. In the very next sentence, it says, except for a new built form, an unenclosed but roofed grandstand for 100 people. Um, there's no detail. Could I ask the administration what footprint is permitted and where will it be located? See you. Thanks, Clinton. Uh, through the chair, the um, the um, seating um, um, option has been left fairly flexible for the SMA to um, determine the best location. Um, I understand this. Um, this uh, inclusion of this option was a, um, a compromise where the Stadium Management Authority were looking for a much lar larger um, seating arrangement for over number two. So this is a smaller um, setup. Um, it's only roofed for shade or um, protection from the rain. Um, and so the sides will be unenclosed and 100 seats would be um, a relatively few number of rows of seating. Um, we don't have any um, um, design um, proposals or anything from the SMA at the moment, but it's been included um, there as an option. So uh, will the SMA um, submit a plan, Lord Mayor, for this, for approval of Council, or is uh, that um, assumed to have been agreed to once this goes out to consultation and it's approved? I would assume that if given it's at the CLMP that anything would come back into consultation, so I'll just look to the CEO. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor, just like any proposal in the parklands, it would go through the, the regular process. That is, it would go to Applet, it would come to Council and Council would decide. <laughs> Okay, all right. Um, uh, this proposed plan includes the use of Stella Bowen Park um, on, on or near the top of uh, Montefiore Hill, which acts as uh, council administration uh, advice to us previously, acts as part of a sound funnel to uh, North Adelaide. Um, now, considering it will cater for events up to 1,500 people, uh, the same number, for example, as for the thing we approved earlier, Archie's at um, Park 21. Um, it, isn't there a possibility that um, uh, this is at odds with our previous motion, voted in 2016 and reported by the administration, um, not agreeing to events of the nature and scale envisaged by the Stadium Management Authority in Stella Bowen uh, Park, that is 1,500 people. Isn't a rescission motion necessary? CEO. Thanks, Clinton. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor, um, just confirming, um, and I'm not sure if the um, councillor has had the opportunity to um, see the information that was sent out to elected members today, yep. um, but as required under the um, Adelaide Oval Redevelopment Act, um, the City of Adelaide granted a licence to the Minister for the Adelaide Oval Licence Area incorporating the Stella Bar Bowen Park and Over Number 2. In 2011, the Minister granted a sub-licence to the Stadium Management Authority for the duration of 80 years, and this expires in 2091. Um, the, um, 
treatment and the event space um, that you're referring to for Stella Bowen Park is, is not considered um, as part of um, this arrangement and the CLMP is consistent with um, Council's previous decision on Stella Bowen Park and the use of? Oh, look, I'm confused. Uh, it, I don't understand why Council had the authority to approve something or disapprove something in 2016 and it doesn't have it now, but look, that's fine. Um, uh, look, Lord Mayor, may I speak to this now? Certainly, Councillor. Thank you. Look, I, I am really disappointed about this CLMP. Um, uh, there was no workshop, no real discussion about this at all. Um, we were just presented a week ago um, with what is coming to Council to go out to public consultation. And uh, despite my asking and asking formally how many contacts how many meetings and phone calls did our administration have with the Stadium Management Authority over this plan in comparison to other organisations and businesses? There has been no answer, silence, just nothing. So uh, this, uh, this evasion of that question, together with uh, the SMA plan, and it is the SMA's plan, we are hearing that. Um, the SMA wanted this, we compromised on that, we are going to leave this to the SMA, that sort of thing. Um, this SMA plan for Adelaide Oval 2, Stella Bowen Park, Pennington and Creswell Gardens, uh, presented to and knocked back by the council in 2016, um, leads me to the inevitable conclusion that we should rename this the Stadium uh, Management Authority uh, land management plan, because that's exactly all it is. And if I had the capacity to genuflect, I genuflect every time I said Stadium Management Authority. Now, look, I, I am betting that uh, my constituents, the ones still seething over part two and um, the team's plan to give that to the Crows, are going to be mightily disappointed. But uh, let's ask them. Uh, let's, in a serious manner, uh, ask them what they think about the SMA wanting to build a grandstand for 100 people on the parklands at a location that's not determined in a footprint that we don't know about and of unknown building materials. And we need to ask them how they feel about Adelaide Oval 2 being turned into a car park, formally turned into a car park in our community land management plan for 1,350 cars, in addition to the hundreds of cars parked on Stella Bowl. Now, this is turning uh, the parklands into a parking cash cow for the SMA. And Lord Mayor, I don't begrudge them dollars. I know they're doing it tough. Uh, and in fact, I read they were having trouble meeting a loan payment recently, or at least asked the government about a deferral. So yes, they are doing it tough. But really, is it appropriate that we should be asking 1,500 people uh, or at least asking our residents and ratepayers to put up with 1,500 people on Stella Bowen Park, 5,000 each on Pennington Gardens and Creswell Gardens, and then another 15,000 on Adelaide Oval 2. Now, if, and I'm not suggesting the Stadium Management Authority would even think about this, but if the Stadium Management Authority had, had one single event on that parklands, may I have 30 seconds more? Thank you. If they decided to have that number of events, it would amount to 26,500 people, half the capacity of the Adelaide Oval on the outside of the Adelaide Oval. Now, look, I, I am really struggling with this. Um, I can't imagine which resident is going to welcome this or which business is going to be pleased to have the Stadium Management Authority offering as it proposes liquor and food on this site. But Lord Mayor, um, I will not oppose public consultation. Um, I was in favour of one throughout the whole of the Park 2 business, and so uh, it would be an about face to suddenly oppose this. But I do hope that many, many people respond and that their voices are noted. Councillor Martin, members, any other speakers? If not, I'll go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Members, that takes us to uh, items 10.7, which is the Peace Park Town Clark's Walk succession plan. Um, and I'll look for a mover. 
Members, if I could have a move on. Thank you, Councillor Kouros, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Uh, Councillor Kouros, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Kerr, members? Councillor Martin? Um, uh, yeah, look, Lord Mayor, I just um, uh, want to ask the administration, and this is a, a serious question, if we couldn't have a formal policy in relation to trees which are not welcome in our parklands and trees which are welcome. There is no arborist report here. Uh, there is no argument that says this is a consistent policy we're applying across the parklands. It is a policy that we're applying 18 mature trees in one park. Um, could, could we have that policy so that it informs debate and discussion about these matters? CEO. Sorry, Lord Mayor, have to take direction from Council. We had your chance. Oh, you did prove it. That's right. So perhaps, yeah. Councillor Martin, um, if I will look to the council, perhaps you can move a motion at uh, next council meeting. Okay. All right. Look, I'll do that. Um, and might I just add, in light of there not being a policy, um, I will vote against this uh, for no other reason that I don't think there's enough information. Thank you. Uh, members, Councillor Moran. Uh, I will too. Um, I don't chop any tree down without a good uh, uh, arborist report and a reason. And um, I'm not given a reason here. I'm sure Itchy Pod Tree has a slightly more attractive name, and that's that's why they're calling it there because it sounds like it's a horrible tree. Actually, Itchy Pod Tree is a very delightful tree. Um, so, so I don't think, uh, with all due respect to the CEO, we should have to ask him to include that in a report. We have a tree removal policy and a parkland tree policy. So I would ask him to find it and use it. Thank you. See you. I'm fully aware we have a policy for handling of trees in the parklands, but Councillor Martin is asking us for a policy that deals with trees that are welcome and trees that are not welcome. I think that's quite different to our current policy. No, no, I'm sorry. That's that in the tree policy, it quite clearly outlines what trees are encouraged and what trees aren't. Uh, we've had long discussions about how we disagree with that. Basically, European trees are discouraged, except in certain points, and native trees are encouraged everywhere. So um, I'd say find it, Marina. CEO. No response. Thank you. Members, any other speakers? If not, I'll go to Councillor Kouros to start. No. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, members, that takes us to item 11 on the agenda. Thank you. Um, members, uh, item 11 is the, my report, Lord Mayor's report. As we all know, the tourism and hospitality industries alongside arts and entertainment are critical sectors of the City of Adelaide's economy and these vital industries have been amongst the hardest hit by COVID-19. We recently hosted a Tourism Industry Council of South Australia conference at the Adelaide Town Hall, showing our commitment to supporting them through this challenging period. The event was well attended, including by the Premier, and many important discussions were had with senior industry representatives from across the state. We've also continued our support for local businesses with two significant grants programs I recently announced on behalf of Council. The Christmas Incentive Scheme, which will help local traders bring greater cheer and experiences to our main streets and key visitor precincts. We also launched the Outdoor Activation Grants for Small Businesses um, impacted by COVID-19, which was quickly oversubscribed by businesses with 45 applications received. There are practical ways Council, sorry, these are practical ways Council with the support of the State Government is working with our business community to achieve greater outcomes for the city. This morning, I presented the opening address for the Intelligent Communities Forum Top 7 Virtual Tour. Adelaide made the original Top 21 and has now been recognised as one of the world's top seven intelligent communities, itself a major honour. Uh, today and tomorrow, the City of Adelaide is giving our finalist pitch to the ICF jury, and we'll find out the results in coming weeks. The City of Adelaide has been with our community every step of the way through COVID-19 and now with the easing of the restrictions, I'm delighted to once again be able to hold my Lord Mayor's open door sessions. Um, these allow me to have conversations with members 
of the community at Town Hall about a range of issues that matter to them. I recently attended the West End Association AGM where we discuss issues, challenges and successes the precincts have had over the past year. Uh, the second Hart Street Round Table was also recently convened. Um, I hosted representative of residents, businesses and property owners and services and we had a productive discussion about how all parties uh, can work together to create a destination with welcoming and authentic experiences for residents, workers and visitors. Engagement on homelessness continues to be a priority for the City of Adelaide and I continue to meet regularly with our stakeholders. I recently met with Dr Alice Clark from Shelter SA as well as Peter Sanderman from Anglicare about a number of projects that are underway. As small events recommence, as a patron, it was wonderful to attend the annual Adelaide Rowing Club annual dinner on the weekend, where I had the pleasure of presenting the annual awards and throw down a challenge for the next president to be a female, not done in the history of the club, which the women in the, uh, in the club were very <laughs> responded to quite cheerfully. Finally, to mark 25 years of service to the community, I have a certificate of outstanding commitment from the LGR South Australia to present to Councillor Anne Moran. Councillor Moran, would you like to come forward and get your certificate? Um, that was, it was a COVID. I, I just I sanitised my hands before I came in. Um, I will actually have a photo with Councillor Moran um, after, yep, after the meeting. Um, the CEO would also like to present two recently received awards to Council. So, Mark, over to you. Yeah, through you, Lord Mayor. The Local Government Professional Awards um, is recognition of excellence within the local government sector. And we've been lucky enough to receive two awards that I want you to present to Council tonight. The first one is the winner in Excellence in Environmental Leadership and Sustainability for the City of Adelaide Renewable Electricity Power Purchase Agreement. Um, our 100% Renewable Electricity Power Purchase Agreement is a, is a first for a Council in South Australia and delivers on the City of Adelaide's long-term goal to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from our operations. It's expected our emissions will be halved for the 2020-21 financial year, while delivering significant energy cost savings compared to recent contracts. The project required significant cross-organisational collaboration with the core project team representing finance, procurement, sustainability, marketing and communications with support from infrastructure, governance and the risk team. Now, the success of this project has demonstrated our environmental leadership and ability to collaborate to deliver multi-benefit projects. So that's the first one, Lord Mayor. Um, and the second one, if I can say, is the winner, excellence in people and culture, uh, the City of Adelaide My Safety System Journey. This is the first time a safety system has won the LG Professionals People and Culture Excellence Award. Uh, but given the emphasis that our leaders put on their people's safety and wellbeing and the processes we have in place to support them, it's not a surprise. The success we've had shifting our safety focus from being an expert-led to a leader-led approach demonstrates that the exec and all our leaders take their duty of care responsibility seriously. And although we were one of the larger councils in terms of FTE, I think that the fact that we lead the sector in safety and injury management performance is proof of that. So if I could present that to you as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, CEO. Well Please, uh, members, I need a mover and a seconder to accept my report. Thank Councillor Sims, seconder Councillor Abraham today. Uh, members to vote those in favour, those against. Thank you. That is carried. Uh, members, item 12.1 on the agenda tonight is reports from council members. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Tonight is the night of awards because I also um, have an award to and present to you on behalf of a Speech Pathology Australia and um, I'll read their remarks um, to you. The award is the Community Contribution Award which is granted by the Association to recognise outside agencies or individuals who have made a significant and valuable contribution to speech pathology. 
The City of Adelaide has developed comprehensive strategies to support individuals with communication disabilities in accessing services, including libraries, community centres and customer service centres. In partnering with Scope Victoria and private speech pathology practice Two Way Street, the City of Adelaide developed a dynamic plan and implementation program that built upon the City's disability access and inclusion plan. Staff are trained and confident in supporting a range of communication systems, including the use of pragmatic organisation, dynamic display. The City of Adelaide's commitment to communication access was evident at the launch of their Disability Access and Inclusion Plan with the provision of an Auslan interpreter, a live captioning, an easy read PowerPoint and a hearing loop. The launch was emceed by an individual with a communication disability, including speech and a personal communication device. This was an excellent opportunity to demonstrate ways communication access can be facilitated in a public forum. The strategies implemented by the City of Adelaide are highly visible, encourage participation and promote inclusion for individuals with communication disabilities. On behalf of Speech Pathology Australia, I'm pleased to recognise these achievements and present the City of Adelaide with a Community Contribution Award. An awards night. Um, members, I will look for a mover and a seconder for the councillor's report. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, seconded Councillor Kouros. Members, any other comments? If not, to the mover to sum up. Deputy, thank you, members, to the vice. In favour? Those against, that is carried. Um, members, uh, item number 13, we have five questions on notice. Uh, with uh, leave of the floor, we'll take those questions as read. Members, if I can see a show of hands, questions as read, thank you very much. Members, that takes us to questions without notice. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. My question is for the CEO. Can the CEO please advise how much money has been expended on the review council has commissioned into the Hutt Street Centre and uh, when the review will be made available to council? Through you, Lord Mayor, the Hutt Street Centre review is a work in progress at the moment. Um, I'm not able to give you a, a figure at this time, but I'm happy to keep council members informed of the costs as we progress. I anticipate that the review will be completed within the next four weeks. Um, there is a process still underway, which is engaging um, with uh, the Hutt Street Centre itself and uh, relevant stakeholders. Um, I anticipate that will occur and be completed in the very near future. So I'll be looking to report to Council as soon as possible. And in that report, I'll provide full details of the costs. Councillor Sims, a follow-up question? Yeah, thanks. By way of supplementary question, can the CEO advise whether or not a South Australian company has been commissioned to undertake the review or whether the review has been commissioned to be undertaken by a legal firm in the state? CEO? Through you, Lord Mayor. The, um, the legal entity that's undertaking the review is a South Australian a local um, reviewer. Thank you. Members, any other questions without notice? Councillor Martin. Um, yes, Lord Mayor, it's a follow-up to 13.3. In answer to that, the administration has stated that it did not disclose to elected members or to a, a, its own strategic risk and internal audit group for almost a year that a former cabinet minister had launched proceedings against the council over an incident involving e-scooters and it has stated it has still not reported to the Audit Committee, which met in March, April, June, July and August, and which receives a litigation report detailing all legal action involving the Council. However, uh, the Administration hasn't answered the question, has evaded the question of why it waited a year to say anything. Why, why, why did you wait? CEO. Through you, Lord Mayor. Rudy, can you assist with the answer to that? Through the Lord Mayor, um, this matter is an insurance matter and uh, as we know our insurer is the Local Government Association Mutual Liability Scheme. 
when a liability claim comes in through the rights of subrogation, the insurer basically takes on the role of the council in the defence and the insurer has indeed been managing that uh, defence accordingly. It's only been listed on uh, our litigation report as presented to our executive uh, Shreya group and then uh, subsequently going to audit committee since it went to the uh, civil, um, the minor uh, magistrate's court for minor civil claims, um, which meant that the insurer couldn't send its own uh, legal representation. It had to go back to the council as a party to the legal proceedings to then send um, um, a suitable uh, representation, which could not be a law firm. So that's when the matter came back into the hands of the City of Adelaide, rather than managed by the Metro Liability Scheme. Am I to understand then that the litigation reports uh, provided to the Audit Committee, and as the administration says, indirectly to the elected body, may not contain all litigation matters that are currently being dealt with by the council? The CEO. Thanks, Rudy. Uh, through the Lord Mayor, <clears throat> in these occasions where indeed the insurer is uh, running the legal defence and, and driving that, um, they are indeed not, not necessarily reported to Sharia. That's correct. Uh, Lord Mayor, may, may I just ask the administration to consider whether it might consider noting such matters in the audit committee report so that at least the elected body knows that those matters are proceeding? CEO. That's through you, Lord Mayor. I think that's a reasonable request. Happy to accommodate. Thank you. Um, and uh, with reference to the uh, the questions uh, related to uh, City of Adelaide staffing, the administration has again confirmed that 159 people left sorry, the Sorry, 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 uh, Councillor Martin. Um, we are talking about 13.5. We are. Thank you. Uh, the administration has again confirmed that 159 people left the organisation in the period up to August 7. On August 14, the Lord Mayor was asked by Channel 10 about the number of positions cut at the Council, to which the Lord Mayor responded only about 20 staff have been cut so far. Um, Lord Mayor, were the 20 you referred, referred to part of the 159 people no longer working at the City of Adelaide? an additional 20 people on top of the 159 people reported four days earlier, or were you misrepresented? Councillor Martin, when uh, we're talking about, as you can see from the reply that has been posted, that those numbers that you're talking about uh, were at the end of fixed term contracts, not terminations. And therefore the 20 that I was talking about were the staff that were impacted that we were informed of by the CEO. So that is part of the 159. The 20 staff uh, that we were informed of, I'm just trying to look at your 150. Oh, I can so we're, it's so there are different, 48. sorry, am I allowed to ask the question? Oh, sorry. Sorry, CEO, did you, you've got your hand on the button. <laughs> Sorry, Lord Mayor, just to be just to be clear, the 159 um, staff members that was referred to uh, was uh, was the staff that were um, impacted during COVID-19. The 20 staff that the Lord Mayor referred to separately were indeed separate staff members, um, and they have been through a process in the last couple of weeks. So yes, they are separate and additional. So they're not part of that original number you were referring to. Uh, Lord Mayor, you actually meant, in addition to the 159, there have been another 20 cut. I think the question has been answered, been answered Councillor Martin. When well, I was asked the question, I was talking about the 20 staff that have been impacted that had been reported on that day. I, I, look, I, I, I know you think you've answered the question, Lord Mayor, but I'm still confused. 159 people went up until August 6th. When you were interviewed three days later by Channel 10, you were saying another 20 had gone. Is that is that correct? Have I got it right? I said 20 staff had been impacted is what we were talking about in terms of that had gone through that week. So the other, um, as you can see there, the reduction with our trainees, our casuals, our temporary employees, um, they were end of fixed term contracts, not terminations. 
Well, no, I, I, I do understand what you're talking about. I'm just trying to understand. I'm trying that, to understand your confusion. Well, no, no, my, my confusion is there were 159 people. Some of them were fixed term employees, some of them were temporary, some of them were trainees, some of them were contract who, whose contracts came to an end, some of them were staff. Mm -hmm. Then you said on television, only 20 have been cut so far. Were you referring to a fresh 20? And uh, the CEO seems to be saying that, but I'm they not sure you- They were 20 that we were referring to that had been impacted the week that that interview happened. So, Correct. Okay, so it's 179. I, I get it. Thank you. I'm happy. Thank you. Well, I'm not happy, but I but thank you for the answer. And, uh, and I do actually also say they are not full-time um, because they were made up of casuals and temporary employees um, as well. Now, members, are there any other questions without notice? If not, we will move on. Councillor Sims, I have 15.1. Uh, Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move the City of Adelaide temporarily offer weekly free bike riding lessons to encourage cycling and improve safety for new riders, similar to the cycling the City Corps offered by the City of Sydney for a period of three months. I look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Mackey. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, when I I um, put this uh, motion forward. I wasn't aware that the City of Adelaide was um, already planning to um, offer um, two sessions of, um, of this kind. And I think that's a great thing because it's um, being offered as an ongoing program in the City of Sydney. Um, and so what I'm proposing is that we offer this as a weekly program um, and we do so for a period of three months. And to give members a sense of how much that will cost based on administration administration's own assessment, 25 cost per participant, um, it would be $3,600. So not a, um, a huge uh, investment, Lord Mayor, but I think worth doing for a few months to see if there is a significant take up. Maybe we could offer it until the end of the year, which would be a, a three month period. Um, we know as a response to the coronavirus pandemic that more and more people have taken up um, cycling. And that's certainly been the case, not just in Adelaide, but all around the world. And in fact, there's been a run on people buying new bikes and so on. Um, but sometimes cycling in the city can be challenging. There are particular road rules and things like that for people to um, understand. And uh, this is a way of um, providing um, a bit more support to encourage people to cycle. And it's a fun and healthy thing to, to do, particularly as we're heading into warmer months. So um, I hope everybody will get behind this. Councillor Mackey, did you wish to speak? Members? Uh, Councillor Kouros? Yeah, I have a question. Um, just can you confirm that that's actually the cost? Because I'm just from the point of that administration. CEO? Through you, Lord Mayor, based on the description Councillor Sims has provided, that we could tailor to that cost um, and it would be similar to what we we're already providing, just an expansion of that's correct. Thank you. Members, any other questions? If not, back to the move to sum up. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Summed up. Summed up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, members, is anybody else a little bit warm? No, Can I I'll just get the temperature turned down by half a degree? That would be good. Yeah, it's, it's quite, we had it turned up because it was freezing in here earlier. I just think we might turn that down. Um, members, thank you. Uh, that takes us to item 15.2, Councillor Sims. Thanks very much. Move, uh, Lord Mayor, I move the Council request that administration prepare a report with options to offer the free bus, train, uh, to offer free bus, train and tram tickets to encourage visitors to the city. Seek a seconder. Emma's looking for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, members will recall uh, last month uh, the City of Adelaide uh, supported um, Drivers Month, um, a an initiative designed to um, bring more cars into the city, uh, and one that I think is totally at odds with Council's work to be carbon neutral, um, and one that lacks um, any clear um, evidence base, and certainly at, at odds with Council's. Councillor, if we can talk to your motion before. For you. But in um, in response to that, Lord Mayor, I did put a suggestion up on my Facebook page for members of the community to come back to me with some ideas for things that we could do to genuinely encourage people to come to the, town, uh, into the city during this time. And one of the suggestions that someone came back with, which I thought was a very good suggestion, was 
let's make um, public transport uh, free for a period. Let's try and provide free uh, tickets to get people to come into um, the city by bus, by train or by tram. Um, and I've suggested Lord Mayor that a report be commissioned to do this. Um, and uh, administration have talked about some of the uh, things that they would take into account when doing that work. This could be done in terms of providing tickets that people can validate, or it could be done after the fact if somebody has a meal in the city, for instance, or buys something in town. Um, I think in particular, this would be a really useful initiative for those working in the bar and restaurant scene, um, for whom encouraging people to come into the city by car is not optimum. Um, because of course people then are not able to purchase alcohol. Something like this that encourages people to take the tram or take the bus home after a, a night out, I think would be a, a really good initiative. Um, so it's a great way for us to encourage people to come into town, to promote some economic activity, but to do so in a way that is consistent with this council's focus on sustainability and carbon neutrality. And uh, I really hope that everybody will get behind it. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Wish to speak. Members, if not, Councillor Kouros. Back in um, May uh, this year, we had a motion from Councillor Canole where he requested for the Lord Mayor to write to the State Government requesting all Adelaide Metro bus and tram services to operate free of charge within the City of Adelaide. Did we hear a response in regards to that from the State Government? We, we did certainly write to uh, to the Minister. Um, I'm just looking to Clinton to see whether we received the response on that one. I know that I've discussed it, I'm just not quite sure if I had it in writing. Yep, through the CEO. Um, through you, Lord Mayor. So yes, um, we did um, draft a letter on behalf of the Lord Mayor, which was sent to the Minister at the time. Um, the response to that letter was that um, there would be some difficulty in implementing um, free public transport in the city, mainly as a result of um, the investment that would be required in a tap on, tap off um, uh, investment in the, in the buses and trams, which is currently not considered um, under the public transport network as it currently stands. Um, not to say that it's an impossibility, it's just with the current um, public transport um, operation network, it's not not feasible. And then if this motion is successful, how would the um, Adelaide City Council be able to implement such a similar system as the State Government can't do that? Councillor, through the Chair, please. Sorry, through the Chair. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, Sorry, Lord Mayor. <laughs> through you, Lord Mayor. Um, in, in our comments uh, provided back to the councillor, we've tried to identify that there are some benefits. There are some, clearly some visitation benefits to the city, but we would have to go away and work with um, the um, South Australian Public Transport Authority to try and work through what that could look like in terms of uh, the feasibility of providing that, that free option for travel. And with this investigation report, I mean, I can see that it would cost a uh, daily, currently the visitors that we have um, coming into the city. When we're talking visitors, are we talking um, people that work here, people that come to university here, or are we talking visitors that people that come and enjoy patrons like come and eat and drink? What, what's your, what would be the administration stance on visitors? CEO. Through Lord Mayor, I think that would need to be clarified in the report. So um, that, that's some of them we need to pull out and, and work through. It may be that we'll need to workshop this with council, or at least through a committee, we can we can provide some options to consider. Right. So currently, what we're looking at uh, from the recommendation is that we're looking at fifty-five thousand people coming to the city daily. So by the looks of it, is it right to say that through your recommendation, we're looking at that would cost a million dollars a day in business, or what, what would that cost be approximately from the report, the recommendation? See, I'm through you, Lord Mayor. The same sort of answer I'd need to provide that you know there are a number of scenarios we could put forward that could be costed, um, and so there is no definitive instruction at this time. Um, and so, yes, we would look at providing you as council with a number of um, feasible propositions to consider as part. Process. So the motion looks at options. So yeah, so the options would come back through the administration. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, members, 
Councillor Martin. Lord Mayor, look, I hope I'm uh, not getting the Team Adelaide negative vibe there about this proposal because this is uh, a piece of good, clear thinking, a proposal that's positive. <laughs> uh, it is a positive proposal. Now, look, I hear the laughter from Nancy and the negatives, but Team Adelaide is wrong. They, they cannot see that this is a proposal that's designed to stimulate activity in the city. And it was such a good proposal for uh, Councillor Canol to ask his uh, son to provide Councillor free Martin. Councillor Martin, Councillor Martin, please. Well, I think it was a good idea. Yes, yeah, great. Thank you. Thank I you, Councillor Martin. Idea. If you've actually finished. So, look, Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, may, may members, I, members, may I just please. say that positivity is the key here. Yes. And Thank look, you. Uh, may, may I also say that I, I would have preferred the administration was much, much more positive in its comments particularly as, and I'm grateful to them for now providing the information about the time that's spent on proposals, uh, and please extend my apologies to the person who spent 20 hours in some garret providing the answer, computer says no, because it is really a grand idea. It's a grand idea. And I'm reminded of that, the positive- think, Excuse me, as, as a point of clarification, the 20 hours that's in the report is uh, the assumed amount of time it would take to prepare the report not how much time it took to answer the question. Well, it says here, staff time in preparing the workshop slash report requested Requested in the motion, 20 hours. There you go. Yes, very well, man. You know, there is a process we need to go through. Undertaking a workshop requires staff resources with options and and considered considered, um, information. So- If you keep um, reading two lines down, it actually says that it was four and a half hours in terms of the administrative Oh, look, I beg your pardon. And I, look, I'm so pleased they were out of the garret and four and a half hours. That's, that's really great. great. But look, may I, in the spirit of positivity, uh, Lord Mayor, point out to the uh, uh, the other side, which is sounding like it's going to vote against it, that um, there is a can-do approach, and Tasmania exemplified that during the week. Um, they introduced a scheme whereby residents were encouraged to stay at home and the government put up seven and a half million dollars in accommodation vouchers for accommodation Monday to Friday. They were gone, gone in about two or three minutes. Now, this is exactly the kind of thinking we need. And let me say to you, Lord Mayor, that that, that, that action of the government of Tasmania was not dogged by, oh dear, will it be abused? Will they come on Saturday instead of Wednesday? Tuesday or Tuesday, what happens if somebody comes and they're actually working and not on holidays? It was accepted by the government that that was a legitimate means of encouraging people to patronise accommodation in Tasmania. Now, in the same way, we can all be positive here and ask the administration to come back with a report that looks at how we might stimulate visitations to the city. Uh, look, members, uh, please vote for positivity, not the negativity we're used to. Thank you. I have Councillor Canal, followed by Councillor Abrams. Um, again, uh, it's interesting to, to get the difference between requesting of the, the you know the user, the facilitator of the bus service, and asking them to be able to find a way to provide free services within the city that is within their capacity. But we find ways that are so unbusinesslike to try and find support for uh, our our businesses, etc., by uh, you know the most awkward way to deliver a, a process by which to encourage people to come to the city. Now, not only would this be an expensive process, and let's face it, there's no way if there's a ticket that costs five dollars seventy and it's it's a, it's a two zone ticket, uh, we need to get this to the consumer in some fashion. It needs to be managed in some way. So the administration will have to have a reasonable input uh, and our new citywide business model when that comes up uh, could potentially you know, uh, have some ideas around that. But I can't imagine how you're going to be able to target uh, the, you know, your, the public well, because we're talking about, even with the car months, we're talking about encouraging people, uh, promoting, uh, it's more of a marketing exercise and finding ways and, uh, of getting them interested in coming to the city. And it would be nice to reward people, but it has to be done at the, at the business level. And we're asking council, the smallest tier of government, government to try to come up with quite an expensive process. And, and, uh, and I don't see this as delivering what you're actually, uh, the outcome you're looking for. We have, uh, you know, pensioners that come here, they get free sp uh, bus. You've got all these people that already have free access to the city that they don't need any more encouragement. So how are we going to manage this 
process that is going to deliver any value for money uh, on behalf of, the, of our businesses. It's much more important that we curate our city, much more important that we find ways and, and means that they come, uh, have reasons to come out of the city. And through all the marketing exercises and uh, uh, more commercial orientated outcomes, that we can actually enable people to come there and reward them. But finding a cumbersome uh, system uh, like this that is going to be very hard to manage uh, is, is the most awkward way to actually try to deliver some benefit. And, and I find it a pretty amazing, but hey, it's an exercise and obviously the positivity, I'm positive that it won't work. And, <laughs> and, and I think we need to think a little bit more about uh, enabling people, being that destination and right. having reasons. Yeah, yeah, and again, 90% of people come here by car. And we want to encourage them, but now at the moment they're not being encouraged to come by bus. So we have to wait our time and prepare. And I think there will be times we'll have that once we actually work together with a citywide uh, strategy uh, for access, etc. And then we can start to enable people to use other forms of transport. And in that, uh, provide value rather than throwing out huge sums of money for, for nominal gain. Uh, Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I do sense a uh, genuine intention here by Councillor Sims to try and bring people here to the city uh, to increase our visitors, for uh, for them to support our traders, and uh, especially now coming out of COVID, uh, our traders do rely on uh, on uh, large numbers of uh, visitors. But um, I, I won't be supporting this because I think um, that uh, administration comments, particularly under uh, point two. Uh, do paint a, a good picture of uh, why such a, a motion and uh, an initiative uh, won't work. Um, we've got the first point, which is uh, uh, all around um, uh, such an initiative being uh, taken advantage of. We've got the second point that talks uh, about the lack of uh, control and oversight. Uh, the third point uh, that talks about uh, people not wanting to use public transport because of um, COVID. Uh, uh, fears uh, and uh, and whatnot, and then you've got the last point, which talks about um, the uh, the intention of the motion. That is, to, if you want to increase the numbers of visitors, you're better off activating uh, a space. You're better off doing something else, running another project or initiative here in the city, in order to get the same outcome. So, if it's about outcomes, let's have a look at that. Let's explore that further, and let's see whether if uh, that can turn into a, a motion. Thank you, members. To the floor, Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, this is an intriguing one, and it's uh, particularly intriguing given the Drivers' Month commentary and the commentary that's occurring with this motion. Um, I think there was an indication from Councillor Canole, but I didn't quite catch it, around an a, the, the percentage of people who drive to the city, but I didn't quite catch the number he said. 80%. But in actual fact, 34%, based on our own city user profile data, only 34% of people who travel to the city come by car. 55% come by public transport. 15% come by either foot or on bike. So noting that only 34% are coming by car and 55% are coming by public transport, if we are looking to incentivise people coming into the city, noting the cost of parking, the cost of public transport tickets, why are we favouring any one method? And I appreciate the comment from council, uh, from administration around the potential costs, the pros and cons, but if our primary aim is to bring people into the city, and we know that the majority of people are travelling by public transport, would we not try and make that easier so that in the same way as we are potentially looking at incentivising car travel or, or funding or supporting in some way, we are similarly looking at how we can provide the same or similar benefit to the majority of travellers, that being 55% who are currently coming in by public transport. And I, I note the valid point by Councillor Connell that some of those are already getting a <coughs> discount coming in through methods like the um, getting the pensioner discount. However, let's come back to the central point of we're supporting bringing people in. Let's look at all available ways of doing that. And if there is a potential of finding a way to make that easy, uh, and uh, supporting it in the same sorts of ways that we are potentially supporting people travelling in by car, noting also all of the other benefits and the fact that this actually supports our own strategies in a much more consistent way than 
bringing more cars into the city, um, then I think we should investigate ways of doing that. And if that ends up being that we're, we're supporting the state government to enable that, or that might be what it ends up with, that is the very purpose of getting the report. So I do support this, and I think let's get back to the essential thing that we are all focused on, that being bringing more people into the city and finding ways of enabling that, and let's set aside any other prejudices around mode or anything else and support this motion. Thank you. Members, Councillor McMackie. Um, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I commend Councillor Sims your, your desire to activate and, as Councillor Donovan has said, public transport as a mode of bringing people into the city. I also understand the concerns expressed by other council colleagues regarding the potential cost factor. Um, I guess what I, what I would hope uh, that a report such as this, which will take a, possibly 20 hours of officer time, would, would illuminate. Uh, one of the things that it should illuminate is that already many hundreds of thousands of South Australians, the vast majority of whom live in metropolitan Adelaide, greater metropolitan Adelaide, can travel for free on public transport every day of the week and clearly do. And as Councillor Donovan has illuminated, the number of people who do use public transport uh, um, uh, outside, of the, and I would add to that, outside of the commuting, working uh, um, members, and that a report such as this might help us to um, focus uh, some of our thinking about how we market to reach um, the people who already have a right, generously um, provided and underwritten by the South Australian government through the existence of a seniors card. If you're working less than 20 hours a week uh, or retired and you're over the age of 60, the lion's share of, of those fellow South Australians have a seniors card. And after 15 or 9.30 a.m. in the morning, they can hop on any mode of public transport for free what we want to do is attract them into the city. And if that were envisaged as part of uh, your, your intention, Councillor Sims, I, I would be pleased to support uh, the motion. Members, if not, I'll go Councillor Sims to sum up. Councillor Sims. Thanks very much, Lord Mayor, and, and thank you, members, for your comments. And yes, absolutely, uh, Councillor Mackey, through you, Lord Mayor. And that is precisely the kind of thing that I'm uh, talking about and intending with this motion. Um, I framed it in such a way that it is a deliberately broad, um, Lord Mayor, and that is because um, I would hope that administration would go away and look at some of the options. There are lots of different ways that this could work. We could maybe offer some of this free public transport to encourage people to come to a particular event um, on the proviso that they go out and have a meal and have a few drinks afterwards. Or we may say we do a particular free public transport day or we uh, want to provide public transport to people in a particular demographic, or I'm wanting some of those things to be looked at. Um, but this council has made it very clear that it wants to look at what we can do to bring people into the city. Well, let's not then discriminate against um, one form of transport um, over another, particularly when we know that, in fact, a majority of people come into town using public transport. And I know some councillors have said, oh, this is a waste of money. Well, let's see what the report comes up with. But also, Lord Mayor, let's consider the amount of money that this council has spent on uh, free car parking and uh, other such initiatives during this term. We get much better bang for um, our buck by um, providing um, this kind of support in terms of um, bringing people to um, the city. We've had park and ride initiatives, we're having drivers month, we've had a whole range of those sorts of um, projects already over the last two years. This is an opportunity to do something different, um, to actually demonstrate to uh, our residents and ratepayers and the broader community that this council is not just fixated on the cult of the car, but that actually recognises we want to get people to come into the city through a broad um, range of means. And also, um, 
Lord Mayor, it is consistent with this council's broader strategic focus to make Adelaide one of the world's first carbon neutral cities. If we come away from this tonight, and this idea has been voted down by councillors, and all we have to encourage people to come into the city is Drivers Month, Drivers Month, then I think members of the community will be outraged. They'll be saying, what on earth is this council doing? And why on earth is it focusing on gas guzzlers at the expense of clean, green public transport? So I'd urge members to think carefully about how they vote. Councillor Canole is right. There is a key difference between the motion he moved and mine. Mine actually does something. It's not just an advocacy piece. It actually calls on um, the, uh, it actually um, gets uh, some options put on the table um, with some potential action that this council can take within its remit. Um, and uh, Lord Mayor, I really hope members show some leadership on this and get behind it. If they don't, they will have to explain to residents, ratepayers, why they've not done so, and they will have to explain to those bars and restaurants why they're missing out on the potential economic activity that this proposal could generate. Thank you. Uh, council members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Division. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. Would all those in favour of the motion please stand and remain standing until all names have been called? Councillor Ma. Councillor Mackey, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims and Councillor Kouros. Thanks members. That takes us to 15.3. Councillor Abraham's today. Uh, motion on those virtual cafe trail. Thank you Lord Mayor. I move the motion is printed and seek a seconder. Members looking for a seconder. Uh, sorry Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Abraham's today. Thank you Lord Mayor. Good um, Lord Mayor, uh, a little while ago, I woke up in the morning, I looked at myself in the mirror and I asked, mirror, mirror <laughs> on the wall, who's got the best coffee off the wall? <laughs> and uh, well, that's part of my dad jokes, I'm working on them. Um, uh, all jokes aside, this, uh, this idea came to me by a, uh, a barista that works at Toast Adelaide, a small cafe that's uh, on Bank Street. Um, and I came across this this, uh, uh, this little coffee place uh, when I was running a, um, uh, a campaign. We were uh, deep in the middle of uh, COVID. A lot of uh, places were shut down. Uh, there weren't many visitors coming into the city. And so uh, I essentially went on social media and I tried to uh, uh, promote some of these local businesses. And I essentially ran a tab. I ran a tab and I encouraged people to go in and buy a coffee on me. So I got to know these people at Toast Adelaide and so this idea came to me and so I thought uh, this is worthwhile exploring because if it wasn't uh, if it wasn't because of uh, that campaign that I was running I would have never gone into that cafe and, uh, and I would have never uh, um, tasted their coffee and, and seen what uh, you know what's on offer and what they're all about. I think a, um, a roadmap or a, or a virtual map of, uh, of some sort will expose some of these businesses who are good businesses who are struggling who are doing it tough it will put them on a, on a map, virtually or, or a real map, uh, and hopefully that will um, uh, increase their business. Uh, and if uh, such a uh, um, uh, initiative is successful, I've noticed that uh, uh, the comments that have been provided by administration uh, notes that uh, there are uh, over 70 trails, 20 of which are food and drinks related. Um, hopefully we can uh, increase this uh, attractive uh, uh, map to, um, uh, to some of the other trails that, that we have and uh, it might be a trend. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Members? Councillor Martin. I just wanted to speak in support of this, uh, Lord Mayor. I think it's a great idea um, and uh, I'm happy to support it. Just a, a question in respect of the calculations. This one took four hours to answer, is that correct? CEO. Yeah, three, Lord Mayor. Yes, look, any, any motion that council members may put forward will automatically incur some time for processing. And um, 
you know, it, it will be that um, four hours will likely be the minimum that will be applied to, to future motions because that is what it takes. There will, be, there will be times when motions require much more research to respond to. That will take further time, but you, we can expect, and you should know, that that's the sort of time that is um, utilised in responding to motions. So does it work uh, like lawyers where you work in seven minute cycles? Councillor, we're talking to the motion. Thank well, you. No, Lord Mayor, I'm, I'm if, if there's other questions that um, you need to ask, when we're actually talking to the motion. Uh, well, I was just interested in that. But look, I support this motion. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. It's lovely. Yeah. Thank you. You've got your happy pants on tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Members. Sorry, Councillor Donovan. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, with leave of the mover, I'm just wondering if uh, we can include within administration response without varying the motion that we seek um, input from administration as to the most effective way to do this i.e for example if the um, business team were to suggest that it would be more effective to do it through google maps because to encourage businesses to get onto google maps so that their business pops up when someone types in cafe in, in adelaide and to help get <coughs> likes and rating on google maps that we can seek our expert advice as to the best way to enact the general gist of the motion. So Councillor Donovan, so you wish to just add a few words as part of the hashtag my Adelaide campaign and other methods? As as per administration's expert guidance. Councillor Abraham Zadeh, are you happy oh, to yeah. include that? Could we actually add that in? And other methods? Emotional methods maybe? I don't know. Are you happy with those words? Yes. Um, thank you. I also, Deputy Lord Mayor, you're happy for yeah, that? Yeah, Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Um, members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Abraham today to sum up. up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, I think uh, it was actually. Can we have that recorded as unanimous? Thank you. Um, we take that takes us now to 15.4. Uh, Councillor Martin, Ronald McDonald House Crossing. Um, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. And I seek a seconder. Members? Oh, they all went up quite quickly. Thank you. Um, look, as the administration comment notes, this was uh, first investigated almost a decade ago, and uh, an attempt at a solution was advanced. However, the ratepayers in the area uh, tell me that while they're very grateful for the solution, uh, that is the protuberances that were installed, um, there still needs to be a, a, a better and bigger solution, though um, no one's certain what it is. Um, there are a great many people who visit medical suites on uh, uh, Melbourne Street. Um, people park on the southern side of Melbourne Street or alternatively, they park in side streets in uh, McKinnon Parade or Finner Street and then use Newlands Lane to immediately cross Melbourne Street. Uh, and uh, additionally, there's a lot of traffic uh, with Ronald McDonald House. Now, for those who don't know about Ronald McDonald House, it is, uh, as uh, the foundation says, a home away from home uh, for families of seriously ill children and it caters for literally thousands of people every year, including uh, young children who cross at that, uh, that point, even though there is no formal crossing. And uh, in the circumstances, that's a, you know, a matter of some concern, but for many people, it's a matter of even greater concern because Melbourne Street's a major arterial road. There are in excess, of, there were uh, pre-COVID, in excess of 25,000 uh, traffic movements in Melbourne Street in a day. So um, it is a serious manoeuvre to cross that street. Um, and while I'm not suggesting that uh, life and limb is in danger at this point, it is a matter of some concern uh, for not only residents, uh, but for the, uh, the medical suites, for the doctors, the nurses, and other people in that area, together with uh, visitors uh, who are going to appointments. Now, uh, this request, as uh, the administration notes at three, is consistent with the Melbourne Street Action Plan, which is under development. And I ask uh, members to support this motion on the basis that the report, and that's all we're asking for, the report will provide options 
updated for the circumstances. We are now 10 years on almost from when it was last investigated. Uh, and the cost is, uh, I would argue, uh, fairly insubstantial for the gain for those people who frequent that area on a regular basis. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mackey. As a second, did you wish to speak? Members, would anybody else wish to speak? Question, Lord Mayor. That's right. I just wanted to know how many complaints have we received about who received um, complaints? CEO, are you able to answer that? Through the Lord Mayor, if we have actually, Clinton. Uh, through the Lord Mayor, um, I would have to take that question on notice. So I'm not sure at this point in time. I haven't heard any complaints either, just wondering, because Councillor Martin has been going on about complaints being received and I, no one's ever complained to me, so it would be nice if we could have that maybe in recommendation if there have been any complaints. Uh, thank you, Councillor Kouros. Members, if not, can back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Um, look, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, there have been conversations that I have had with rate payers and um, that there is a problem there is beyond dispute. It's been there since uh, the beginning of the century. It was examined in 2010. People are still talking about it, including Ronald McDonald House and residents and ratepayers. Um, a complaint doesn't have to be made to make the motion of a member of council valid. Just as nobody has complained that there's an absence of a virtual cafe trail, uh, but we all support that. Now, this is uh, likewise a proposal to the administration to have a look at the issues associated with that area. And I make the point that there is no crossing there. The nearest crossing is out of sight around the corner uh, at the intersection of Brougham and Melbourne streets. Uh, and uh, for Councillor Kouros's benefit, the next one along is the corner of Jerningham and Melbourne Street. So it is quite some distance. This measure, uh, uh, whatever it is, is aimed at assisting, uh, whatever the administration recommends, is aimed at assisting people, a large number of people, who move across that street against traffic throughout the day. It is there for everyone to see. Uh, and I ask members to support what is merely a, a request to the administration to have a look at the age old problem, which is also consistent with our action development plan for the area, our current plan. So, you know, I, I just ask you to support this in, uh, in, in an effort to aid uh, not only visitors, but residents of the area. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, members, that takes us to 15.5, City Awards Online category. Councillor Martin. Uh, look, Lord Mayor, I accept the COVID-specific categories include an online component, so I'll bring this back to Council um, when the pandemic passes. Thank you, Councillor. There's uh, also uh, one other award, um, which was a new uh, category this year, which was the Adelaide Artisan Award. Um, and we are looking forward to seeing who the winners are. Um, that takes us to uh, uh, item 15.6, Councillor Moran, Master Plan for Hart Street. Uh, yes, I move that the extensive master plan for Hart Street be abandoned, given the Deputy Lord Mayor has proposed a plan and publicly announced it. Um, I quite like the plan. We'll look for a second. Uh, let's thank, you, thank, you. So, thank you, Councillor Moran. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Yes, I think we'd save a lot of time and money. Um, he's obviously had a little bit of a thought bubble and attracted the advertisers' uh, interest, something that very few of us can do these days. Um, it, seemed, uh, it seemed a very nice plan. Um, I don't think it actually quite fits into the street as uh, the local hood councillor said, but I don't know why we bother to have the master plans really. I'm going to do one myself for Hutt, for um, Melbourne Street and O'Connell Street next week. Uh, that'll probably save us about a half a million dollars and how many hours of staff time? Just tick one box and it takes four hours. This will take about 400 hours. So look, I urge you to bow to the master planner. 20, our 26 year old master plan showed great talent. 
and I'll use my extreme age and experience to do the rest of the main streets. Excellent. Thank you, Councillor, and we look forward to receiving those plans. Um, Councillor Martin. <laughs> oh, look, I, uh, Lord Mayor, I just wanted to uh, thank uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor for his plan for Hutt Street. Um, as Councillor Moran says, this is the way forward. Um, and may I just compliment the administration as I understand it, and I'll be corrected if I'm wrong, 5.5 hours to respond to this is a, a really cheap answer. I, I thank you for your cheap answer um, to what is uh, uh, an expensive uh, proposal, but one nevertheless that I'm sure that my colleagues will want to endorse. Um, it is uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor's mind at work. It is something to behold. Members? Councillor Kouros and then Councillor Kira. I actually feel sorry for the Hutt Street traders because I believe that the, they are the ones that uh, got this report or this master plan um, to the advertiser and I actually um, commend them for actually taking the initiative and putting something out there um, and putting it out there for the public to review, have a discussion, um, you know, look at the pretty pictures of what Hutt Street could be, maybe it won't work, maybe it will work, I don't know. But I mean, I really feel sorry with this Hutt Street traders really get this backlash about, you know, saying that they're not worthy to be able to have their that's thoughts. Right, uh, because that's who, because that's who. Sorry, worthy. members, it's if there's, there. what is, there. the, excuse it's me, there. Councillor Kouros, what is your point of order? What is your point of order? My point of order is that Councillor Kouros is misrepresenting my motion, saying I'm being offensive. I'm so impressed with the trader's plan, given the uh, uh, author's, uh, author is uh, the deputy will be. I'm saying it's so good, let's adopt So, Councillor Moran, a point of order is actually a breach of the standing orders or the Act or the regulations? I, thought, I, thought I don't believe that uh, Councillor Kouros has it was breached that. giving misleading information. Lord Mayor. No, that's code of conduct. This is not. This is a right. point of she's, order. She's misrepresenting it anyway. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry for interrupting, Councillor Kouros. If you can seek to the motion before you. Um, well, it says here to abandon um, the Hutt Street plan. So I would uh, say that that would uh, mean that we're talking about the um, one that was presented to the advertisers. And said, well, uh, sorry, it's not know. clear as to whether it's the oh, Hutt Street, sorry. the advertised one, or it's the council's sorry. one. Sorry. I think Councillor um, Moran is talking about. Our Hutt Street, our uh, master planning process. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord Mayor. I took it that we were talking about, you know, the. Members? Councillor Kira. Sorry. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I too join uh, the chorus of, uh, of um, uh, congratulations to the Deputy Lord Mayor uh, for actually putting forward uh, something with vision, uh, for actually having a connection to real people who are absolutely struggling at the moment. Uh, I do so, however, Lord Mayor, in distinction to some other councils, I do so uh, without uh, resorting to a voice dripping with condescension and dripping uh, with mockery. Councillor uh, Kerr, Councillor Kerr, Councillor Kerr, thank you. I commend, I commend the Deputy Lord Mayor Members. absolutely, I commend the Deputy Lord Mayor absolutely, firmly and absolutely uh, straightforwardly and honestly uh, for, for speaking Thank to you, traders, engaging, um, engaging honestly for speaking to traders, engaging the traders in the strip that we all know has been suffering uh, before COVID, let alone after COVID. Uh, and I think that it's uh, it's quite patently clear uh, a councillor putting forward a vision in that way does not obviate uh, the need uh, for a master plan. It doesn't mean you jettison the master plan. And to do so would cast chill and appall on those councillors who are actually active, who actually want to actively do something to help the City of Adelaide. So uh, with that said, I, I do speak against this motion. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, members, Councillor Martin. What was Councillor Kira saying, Lord Mayor? Thank you, Councillor Martin. Has anybody else got questions from the floor? If not, I'll go back to the mover to sum up. Councillor Moran. Right. Alex. You haven't called yet. You did not say yes, Lord Mayor. You did. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, yes, look, I'm I'm all for during point instance. of order, Lord Mayor. Uh, code, you saw my code, hand, code. and then you called Councillor Moran. I don't believe I did. Deputy you Lord did. Mayor. I saw your mouth <laughs> move. I'm going to ask governance because I don't believe I did, Councillor Deputy Lord Mayor. Jenny didn't see it because Jenny was not looking. Oh. 
No, no it's not. She's not obliged oh to. God, but I was looking directly down. at you. Person. How rude to Lord Mayor. How disrespectful. How classic. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, members, but I actually do think that I called Councillor Moran before I saw your hand, Deputy Lord Mayor. That's fine. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, um, I was a bit confused by what the Mayor was saying, but now we've got the right to save money. But the master plans, in my experience, I'm talking about the expensive master plan that our staff are working on now might as well be abandoned and the job given to our Deputy Councillor Lord Carras. Mayor, who's a can-do kind of guy. And uh, Councillor Moran, please speak to the motion. I am. I'm saying the Hutt Street be abandoned given the Deputy Lord Mayor has proposed a plan and publicly announced it. It was interesting to see here at Council Curros that was actually the traders' plan. <laughs> but um, so I think we just save money and just do it ourselves because there's rooms full of the uh, master plans. It's where dreams for streets go to die. Um, so I commend uh, the new can do little uh, Deputy Lord Mayor and let's, let's run with him. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against. That is carried unanimously. Councillor Moran voted against her own uh, motion, I think. So it's lost. Division, please, Lord Mayor. I did. That motion fails. Would, would you want to try that one again? I'm sorry. That's just very funny. Division, please, like, call it division. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. Would all those in favour of the motion please stand and remain standing until all names have been called? <laughs> Councillor Moran. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Moran, you put your hand up for both for and against. That's why I was confused. <laughs> uh, members, that takes us. Um, <laughs> That takes us to item 15.7 on tonight's agenda, Deputy Lord Mayor. Uh, motion on notice outdoor activation grounds. I move as printed, six second. So, Councillor Kouros. Deputy Lord Mayor. I reserve my right. Councillor Kouros. Members, Councillor Sins. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, I have absolutely no um, problem with this at all. I think it sounds like a very sensible idea. I guess my only um, concern is it is a $300,000 um, expenditure, one of the more uh, expensive potential um, investments. Um, I see uh, Councillor Canole scoffing, um, but it, it, is, it isn't asking for a report. It is actually saying that's the money. So I just want to be assured, given our financial position, that we can afford to do this and um, what it means for other expenditure, given we had a fairly tight um, budget. Thank you, Councillor Sims. So that's my question, the question of administration. Yeah. Sorry. It's the tight budget. Yeah, three, Lord Mayor. Certainly, we have financial challenges at the moment, and Council is fully aware of that. Um, however, we have um, allocated funds for activities such as this, and it really is a decision of Council at the end of the day. So, um, yes, it would be something that's not catered for in the current budget. We would need a budget variation to, to cover the cost. So, uh, uh, just a further question, um, Lord Mayor. Uh, are there going to be uh, cuts required in order to fund this, or it can be done from an exigent, uh, existing budget line? Um, and does that mean that when there are future calls on that line, the cupboard will be there, or will we be able to um, find the money to make it happen? See ya. Lord Mayor, look, for this fund, the funding requirements for this, we'd look to achieve savings to enable it to, to occur without impacting on our budget. So that's what our first um, attempt would be. Should we not be able to achieve that, it would simply be a budget variation, and that gets put into the budget variation process. Um, and at, through that process, we would identify whether savings or further borrowings would be required. Thanks um, very much, CEO. Uh, look, I have an open mind on this, uh, Lord Mayor. I'll listen to um, the debate and um, see what my colleagues uh, have to say, as I do on all issues, and then I will uh, make up my mind. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Um, Councillor Martin. 
Uh, look, thank you, Lord Mayor, and um, I again want to commend the Deputy Lord Mayor for this uh, this proposal. Um, and I wonder whether he might consider an amendment or a variation at point four to increase the amount to seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay. Um, well, in that case, uh, I'd like to move uh, um, an amendment that is at four. The city uh, contributes seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars and knock out further, just seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. No, seven hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, uh, Councillor Kira seems to be at a loss. Um, now look. So, sorry, Councillor, I need a seconder. Councillor Moran. Well, thank you, Lord Mayor, and uh, thank you, Councillor Moran. There was uh, a lot of criticism of this uh, a program when it was launched lo locally, um, and uh, some fairly unfair claims that um, this was a state government save Rachel Sanderson re election group. And of course, that was very, very unfair, Lord Mayor. Um, I, I support entirely the uh, intent of the motion of. Of, uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor, um, uh, and I support the same conditions being applied to this uh, proposal. But uh, because it's been so well received and the administration has given us the advice that we need, um, there have already been 35 applications which have not been able to be accepted because uh, it was full, the grant was full. And there's another 30 expressions of interest pending. So that's 65 without actually advertising that the program is over. 65 businesses are not um, uh, assisted by the first uh, leg of the program. So in a sense, asking uh, the administration and uh, uh, council to hand out $300,000 is a guaranteed way of upsetting a lot of businesses who would hope that they would be eligible because it's being reopened but would quickly find, much like Tasmania's uh, holiday at home thing, uh, that it fills up very quickly within a few minutes. So $750,000 uh, would allow the city to do something really worthwhile for the businesses of this city. And I think it's a small cost, Lord Mayor, uh, given that Team Adelaide has refused to give any rate relief to uh, uh, our ratepayers, including businesses in the city, who are still struggling. So this is a very small measure compared to what we could have done in terms of rate relief. This is just $750,000, and it will have some immediate impact, not only on businesses, but on the trades, uh, who they will engage uh, to complete that work. Uh, trades that are guaranteed an additional 80% or up to 80% uh, of the initial investment cost when they uh, complete the work. So look, I, I, I commend to members the variation and, and ask you to support it. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak? Uh, no, I'll Okay, members. So Councillor Kouros, then Councillor Mackey. Considering <laughs> that the um, the first grant was um, given by the state government, and now um, can we ask for uh, the state government to uh, include a, a matching amount or half the amount, or can I do a variation on top of that? Oh, you'll have to put forward a variant. Uh, Councillor, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor. No, no, it's amendment, oh. Lord Mayor. So variation goes to me. Not and yes, I would accept the variation of that. All right, so can we add that in, that uh, that we have the um, state government to be able to match? So are you saying that we're asking the state government to match the 750,000? Or match the 300? Or half of the amount? So, so sorry, I'm very unclear as to what you're asking. The so year. we've got, a we, well, if the um, state government has already uh, contributed 300,000, mm -hmm. are they willing to match the same amount to 300,000 or half of the amount of 750? Something like that. Well, maybe something help. So, please, Councillor Martin. <laughs> yeah. Look, uh, all that Councillor Kouros is asking is that uh, 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 contributes 
750,000 to the program with 375,000 supplied by the state government or, or um, matched, uh, not matched. Is that supplied. included in the 750 yes. or is that in addition yes. to? No, no. So therefore you have to say contribute 375,000 to be matched by state government, which goes back to actually the Deputy Lord Mayor's original, really. Uh, no, the difference is that he's been receiving of uh, 300,000. This is 750,000, and Councillor Kuros has asked that we ask the state government to con consider contributing 375. So, so I'm sorry, just for clarity, the, the way this reads is saying that council is contributing 750,000 to be matched by the state government, which is a further 750,000. No, that's not what we're saying, Lord Mayor. That is what is before me. That's no. why I'm trying to get clarity. And what I was saying to you then was, that you can change the word contribute if you like, um, um, $750,000 uh, is, uh, is raised for the program with $375,000 to, to be provided by the state government or, or, or to be offered by the state government and reopens applications. With 375,000 contributors. Well. So you have to take the first word contributes out because it says that council contributes. So you have to take No, because it's still saying seven hundred and fifty thousand. No, well that's correct. As it is, it's correct. So seven hundred and fifty thousand is spent budget of whatever the program is three hundred and seventy thousand. That's not how it reads. That if you read it straight if you say the council contributes seven hundred and fifty thousand with a 750, 375 contribution that would be on in addition to, not as part of. Sorry? Uh, well, it's I your motion, it's so you have to stay here. Just, just a few minutes, uh, Councillor. It's just taking longer than I anticipated. <laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> Okay, members, I'm going to go back to Councillor Martin to see whether he accepts the amendment or, or the variation to his amendment, yes, and then Councillor Kuros. Um, and Councillor, oh, I've forgotten where I've gone now. Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran, do you accept the 
variation to the amendment? So I then need leave of the meeting to accept the variation to that amendment. Members by show of hands. <coughs> okay, then we go back to Councillor Kouros to speak to it. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, as agreed with uh, Councillor Martin, it was a, a very popular um, initiative. Um, and there was quite a few people that have missed out on the um, uh, of putting in a proposal. Um, in, within 11 days, we actually reached that amount very, very quickly. Um, and it just goes to show that how much people are, or business owners are really willing to, you know, really put that effort into their business. But, you know, they have, um, because of the current times, it's been very difficult for them um, because they're concentrating internally rather than externally. So this support to be able to make the public realm um, more accessible for their business is a great way and a great initiative for them. So um, I thank Councillor Martin for accepting this variation because it actually allows the actual state government to come on board and support the, the um, businesses in the city uh, to continue the improvements um, that they need in order to um, be able to sustain through this period of COVID. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mackey. Uh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm absolutely supportive of um, both uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor's initial uh, um, motion, that intent, and um, Councillor Martin's variation with the additional benefit of um, uh, Councillor Kouros's um, uh, um, further variations. I do. Uh, wonder whether the now procedurally I'll take advice whether, whether it's the mover of the variation or whether it's the initial mover of the motion might consider a, a small additional variation. At the moment we're on the amendment which is Councillor Martin oh, so I, if there's any additional okay, variation you have to go back. Um, yeah. No if, if you want to make a variation oh, you do it. it. I, okay um, thank you Lord Mayor and um, thank you Councillor Martin um, and I'll take advice on the, the wording and um, my colleague Councillor Donovan has just put some words in my ear which sounded very good and have just gone out again. Uh, um, uh, um, so in relation to uh, Point four, allocates three seventy five thousand for the program and request, uh, which I, I assume we all understand means in additional funds uh, and request matching funding from the state government, comma, and prioritises improvements to accessibility to city buildings. Um, uh, for for users of sorry for all, for all users, which would include of course uh, uh, people with disability. So I'll go back to Councillor Martin. Well, I'm just trying to understand the words there. Um, yes, and we are introducing something new to the. Sorry, if I can just ask governance to talk to Vic. So you're introducing a new concept to the motion, which is about outdoor activation grants. It may be that this should be dealt with as an amendment. After we deal with this amendment, we may have, we can have a second amendment. Three of them there. Thank you. I accept the advice of the administration. Um, so, members, we're not dealing with that at the moment. Uh, Councillor Donovan, did you wish to speak to... Well, I, I guess a point of clarification, it is one of the subcategories by which the outdoor activation uh, funding can be used, so I'm not sure why it wouldn't be seen as an, an appropriate usage. So, prioritises the additional funding for improvements to accessibility to city buildings for all users fits within the outdoor activation fund category. So as a point of order or a point of clarification, I would suggest that it fits very well within 
the existing amendment. So it's simply stating that as already identified, the additional funding would simply be prioritised. One of the funding um, categories would be to prioritise the utilisation of these funds for anyone who was specifically seeking to improve accessibility to all users. So the wording I'm could sorry, possibly be I'm clarified. Asked several things, and I'm not sure where we're going. So I'm going to go to the CEO to see: Is there a problem? Do we need to move it as a second amendment? Is it within the grant categories? Over to you. Through Lord Mayor, look, I honestly believe it needs to be an amendment, a separate amendment, just to be really clear. Why would it need to be a separate amendment, CEO? Though, given it is, or through you, Lord Mayor, um, why would it need to be a separate amendment, given it is one of the specific categories within outdoor activation? Grant, CEO. It's a judgment call through you, Lord Mayor. Um, I believe just for clarity, it would be best to deal with it as an amendment, but it's it's a it's a judgment call from you, Lord Mayor, but I'll, that's the way I would deal with it. Oh, based on what, though? Just my view is, for clarity purposes, it, it would be better to be as an amendment. So the, it is within the program. We look. I'm going to actually do this advice coming left, front, centre. I'm going to use it as a, as a separate amendment. So we're just going to take it out for now. We're going to stick with the allocation of funds, and we will go to back to the floor if anybody would like to speak to the allocation of funds in terms of Deputy Lord Mayor. I'm glad we got there in the end, Lord Mayor. Very, very thrilled. Um, 750,000, not sure where that uh, figure came from. I suppose for context, I would have always been happy to put more into it, um, just not that much by ourselves um, at this point in time. Um, going on the figures that Councillor Martin described, 300,000 would have actually accommodated the vast majority of them. And then that actually gives us the opportunity to pause and assess the success of the program or otherwise what we actually delivered, noting um, uh, that the program is not assessing things based on merit or how much of it you just nearly meet, need to meet the threshold of delivering a couple of the outcomes in order to get your funding. Um, it's not actually looking at the quality of, of, the, of the proposal before us. And that's actually, I think, part of the reason why it was subscribed so uh, oversubscribed so quickly. And it's the primary reason that I went to uh, move that more funds be expended on it. And that is because uh, uh, talking to the businesses, a lot of the businesses um, uh, that raised issues with me around their applications being refused said very clearly, look, we wanted to do a quality uh, 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 sort of, uh, uh, I suppose, renovation on the front of our premises. Um, uh, we took time to suss out appropriate builders, uh, people that have the appropriate skills, uh, and uh, they then took time, and uh, probably in part due to the demand that was placed on them, they then took time to deliver the quotes, and that then held up the application process. Um, uh, that, that's, that's the situation that the previous grant program was in, and of course the money was being dished out in the first come basis. So there was no actual quality control in there, which I think is a fundamental um, uh, issue. However, um, uh, that's also why I put it on Capital City Committee, because uh, you know, I can say this now, I fully intended to raise it there and seek further co-contribution. Um, uh, that was the aim of putting it on Capital City, and I was hoping we would be able to show the success um, of the program there once it had been rolled out. Um, uh, you know, going hand over fist and just saying give us more money because we've got too many people, perhaps because the administration of the scheme was a little bit uh, in an unexpected fashion. I don't think it's the way to go about seeking more money from a pretty cash strapped government. Nevertheless, uh, 375,000 is within the realm of what I suppose I, as a councillor here at the city, is willing to risk um, on the program. Bear in mind, we haven't seen the results of it yet. Um, uh, so this amendment is far more palatable to me seeking the co-contribution. Members, anybody else like to speak to the amendment? Councillor 
Donovan, no? Um, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Yeah, look, uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I think we're all in furious agreement about this. I, I, I agree uh, with the Deputy Lord Mayor that um, we have seen a, a great uptake on this program, that it has been welcomed, that many businesses were simply too slow off the mark, whether that was because they had difficulties with getting quotes, uh, whether there were other priorities, um, they are still out there waiting to apply for, uh, to a program such as this to improve their businesses. Um, and additionally, uh, there are, as we know from the administration's uh, report to us at paragraph five, there are 35 applications waiting, ready to go, uh, with a further 30 inquiries, uh, one of which I received, um, uh, or at least an additional one I received today from a, a, a restaurant cafe proprietor who wants to improve the facade and uh, the, uh, the dining area of their uh, premises in the public realm. Um, so look, you know, there is huge interest in this. And what, we're, what I'm proposing here with this amendment, uh, thanks to uh, uh, Councillor Kouros's variation, is $75,000 more than what the uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, Mayor was proposing and asking the state government to put their hands in their pockets uh, once again. Now, I'm hoping that the state government will willingly do that, recognising that this was a successful program. It was something that worked, that the businesses of Adelaide approve of and have taken up. So look, uh, I ask members to approve this. I think it will do some good for business and some good for our local economy, particularly in stimulating not only those businesses who take up the grant, but those businesses which supply services, which come into the city, um, which buy uh, food, which buy fuel, which do all manner of transactions. This is a, a, a uh, transaction in itself, which will lead to a greater number of economic transactions in the city. So I do ask for your uh, support. Thank you, members to the vote. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, it, it was actually, can we actually have that recorded as unanimous, please? Oh, Thank you. Um, now, before we move on, Councillor Donovan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to propose an additional amendment, though I know there are limited people who would be available to second this amendment, um, rather than being included as the variation. The amendment is simply adding a point under allocates 375,000, so under local businesses, sec next point, prior to point five, request the report. Yep, right there, prioritises these additional funds to be spent on improvements to accessibility to city buildings for all users, which is under what types of improvements can I make? Grants are available for medium to long term, street level improvements. These include point, 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 improving accessibility for all users. So it's already included in the uh, criteria. All I'm suggesting is that it Sorry, is prioritised. Actually now looking for the second out, out, which Councillor Mackey was. Before yeah. and explaining it for the purposes of seeking a seconder. Um, Why don't you refer to a declaration? Why don't you refer to the point number at the right there? If there's no point number, it's a dot point, alas. Um, so it is already included as for the purposes of seeking a seconder. I'm simply suggesting that we should prioritise that point for the future applications. It's not excluding other types of applications. Given that we know um, adjustments to facades are very expensive, one of our key aims within the city is to improve accessibility for all users. It helps to activate street frontages for more users. It means city businesses will be able to have access from greater patronage because those people who need to access by wheelchair or with uh, different disability issues or also with prams have easier access. So I'm simply suggesting that we prioritise these additional funds to be spent in that way. And I seek a seconder from one of the few people who have not yet spoken to this motion. So I have already got a seconder in Councillor Mackey, otherwise I wouldn't have let you speak, Councillor Donovan, because you actually just spoke to the motion. Because um, otherwise, you. so I've been actually timing you of speaking to the motion. 
Um, is there anything, any other comments you want to make? No, Councillor Mackey. Um, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, if I could ask a question uh, of the administration. In the administration comment in relation to the Deputy Lord Mayor's initial motion, um, under dot point three, the current program says that a condition of the grant is that 80% of the costs would be funded via the grant with the remaining 20% being covered by the business owner. A maximum of $10,000 is available per application. This is correct. My, my question, I, 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 I do want to support uh, Councillor Donovan's um, uh, variation, um, is that in, in, in the experience of the administration, is that adequate funding uh, for the kind of, of accessibility uh, improvements that, that would need to be made? CEO. Oh, um, apologies, um, Lord Mayor. Um, Councillor Donovan has just ex uh, um, explained that they can they can spend they can spend a hundred thousand, but it's ten thousand is the maximum of correct. the program. Is that, that is correct. correct. That's the maximum of the grant. That, that clarifies my. Uh, Do you wish to speak wish, uh, at all no. as the seconder, um, Councillor Sims? You wish to speak? Thanks, Lord Mayor, and um, just to uh, support the um, amendment um, and to uh, thank Councillor Donovan for putting this forward. Um, I think when we're expending money such as this, it's really important that we get a broader um, policy outcome as well. Obviously, this is something that's going to provide some um, key support to uh, businesses, but also I think there's an opportunity to really deal with some of the accessibility issues that we um, have in the city. And we have had lots of discussions about um, this uh, over the last two years and, and beyond looking at what we can do to improve uh, access of businesses, buildings and so on, in particular for people with a disability. And I think that's a key equity issue. Um, and uh, so by elevating this and prioritising this, it's, it's a way to do that. So um, I really hope that everybody um, gets behind this. It's really what we should be doing as a modern and uh, inclusive city. Thank you. I have Councillor Knoll and Councillor Carroll and Councillor Hyde. Um, there's a question first. Um, I do believe we have in the books uh, a motion in 2016 that talks to accessibility, etc. I think it was by Councillor Sims at that time. I put that forward. Um, so that's one thing that we already have on our books, as in, uh, you know, looking, investigating accessibility. But a question to um, a question question to administration um, that it, how I, mean, I, ex, uh, I would expect that there is really a lot of uh, requirements etc around accessibility because I mean it's even in my time it's been 40 50 years that accessibility has been part of uh, you know our building requirements so how important is it that we restrict this particular motion uh, by using that uh, about accessibility rather than using it for improvement of the actual facade. CEO. Three, Lord Mayor, look, any proposal that we would receive would need to comply with DDA requirements to be acceptable. That's a, that's a given because we would need to do that. Um, Ian, can you provide any further comments regarding, regarding that? Um, just through the Lord Mayor, so um, obviously being oversubscribed and I think that the $10,000 limit is a valid point as we've been looking for fairly quick wins on updating their, updating their outdoor experience. Um, I think I'd, I'd make the point, um, I'm not aware of, of applications that have come in around accessibility, but I'm happy to, to check that and, and come back to the Chamber on, on the specifics. Um, I think we're also leveraging a significant amount of private sector investment through this program too. So the three hundred thirty odd thousand dollars we've invested so far off the state government has generated about four hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of total investment. So that's a, a positive sign. Um, but they, there are fourteen categories for this uh, this grant program. Fourteen categories, and one of them does talk to accessibility. So we just speak to it for a moment. And look, I agree with the sentiment, that's not the point. It's just that uh, if we're looking at this particular grant about it uh, assisting business to 
do things for the front, uh, for the facades and for the, for the entry points and for seating or whatever it is they want to do it for, by narrowing it down specifically to this, you're excluding a lot of opportunities. And it says prioritize, which means that when you've got, the, when you've got your hierarchy of what you're going to do, those that speak to that are going to go first. I mean, uh, how else would you prioritize it? So I have a concern around that, given that we already have a long-standing long motion on uh, about accessibility, given that uh, buildings these days need accessibility as part of, of what they need to have for enabling people to go in. And by narrowing this down to that, I, I just fear we're not allowing people, you know, uh, the, left, you know, the, the breadth of, of opportunity to actually use it, use that money for the best benefit of the business, rather than necessarily being specifically to the assistance of people who have issues, you know, uh, access issues. And I'd like to talk about that separately. Uh, you know, if we have issues around that, you know, as it's highlighted, so I just feel that. I have difficulty supporting that. I've got no problem supporting, obviously, the initial motion, only because we already do a lot around this area, and I haven't seen an issue around uh, us not having the accessibility for people who need it. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. Thank you, oh, Thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, look, I'm with France, Lord Mayor. Um, I, too, uh, share the sentiment. I think we all uh, share the sentiment of wanting to improve accessibility in general, uh, but I think that it uh, would be uh, it would undo uh, what is the purpose of this uh, this whole exercise, and that is quickly to get money out to assist with uh, recovery from the COVID crisis for our small business and in particular the hospitality sector. Let's know uh, alone. Um, uh, I think the shoehorning accessibility into this is going to compromise the uh, effectiveness of the, uh, the original motion. Um, I think as We've already been pointed out there's DDA compliance uh, already built in uh, to the uh, funding grants that are uh, under the existing motion. I think that it would be a mistake to compromise the original uh, motion in this manner. Thank you. Councillor Ho. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Well, I think like Councillor Kira and Councillor Knoll has covered most of the things that I'd like to say. Just a question to the admin, admin though. Right. If there is a building, five levels, or, or, or those old buildings, you have five different businesses in, in the same premises, but that's actually five different businesses. Can they actually submit their jo joint application to, let's say, build a ramp in front of the building for disabled, I mean, wheelchairs to get access to that kind of things? Because, like, I mean, by, by adding on this stuff, I, I think it actually changed the criteria, though. CEO. Sorry, Lord Mayor, the, the guidelines do talk to street level improvements. Um, I think you're suggesting though, could multiple businesses contribute to that in one proposal? Yeah, but in one proposal, can they get, would they get like $50,000 or five or, or $10,000? Oh, well, that, because like numbers will change. In my view, it would be a single application. So it would be a single application. Different. And the other question here is, like when we're looking at this though, like, I mean, if I can say we only got like a 375k available, that means somewhere around less than 40 applications will be approved. If we have 100 applications coming in, and about let's say 30, 30, 30 of them is to deal with like accessibility, which means the other 70 will miss out. Is that it? Is that what you mean? Is that what, what, what this means? CEO? Yeah, three of me, that, that would be the case. I mean, we would prioritise accessibility improvements. There is a limited bucket of money available. Um, and so therefore, if there was a significant number of proposals, we would prioritise those above others and others would miss out. But that's that's what's occurred already to date. We've received a significant number. Um, and it came as first compliant applications were processed and approved. Lord Mayor, can I provide some clarification on the intent of the motion? Uh, I think if the wording is, uh, because that's certainly not my intent, that every single every single application be prioritised. I think it's the, it's the wording of it then, because it says prioritise. Prioritise it as in gives greater weighting. So I presume there is some kind of weighting matrix that's looked but at. No, there isn't. So there isn't. So if we if we prioritise, there isn't a criteria other than you know first day goes to do the improvement. But it, it's not a weighting, and so therefore, if you prioritise it, it means if it's actually on accessibility, that's it. They get the grant, and if it's if it's not, it doesn't get it. That, that, that is actually what uh, Councillor Ho is saying is actually one of, is a true outcome that could happen. Um, Councillor Martin. 
Yeah, look, a question for the administration, Lord Mayor. Of the 30 applications that were approved, how many of them were spent on improvements to accessibility in city buildings? Uh, CEO? Yeah, thanks, Through the Lord Mayor. Um, none to my knowledge, but I will take it on notice just to double check. So, uh, none, but you're not certain you'll take that I'm oh, not 100% certain, Councillor, so I'd just like to double check, but I'm not aware of any myself. Thank you. Um, look, Lord Mayor, may I speak to this? Um, um, really, it seems to me that um, well, there are two things to say. Um, one, there's all kinds of speculation running in this room that really doesn't have much place here. Um, there is, uh, by way of the administration's information, no evidence to suggest that all of these funds are going to be gobbled up by uh, improvements to accessibility. But more particularly, this is actually the moment when organisations like the city should shine on issues of disability access. This is the moment where you say, uh, I want this prioritised. This is something that's important in our set of values as a city. It's not a time for troglodyte statements about how um, I don't want to see disability advantage over anybody else. It is a time that we embrace it. And if that's not clear to the people in this room, then I ask you to go away and have a think about it. This is actually the moment. You say, yes, I get that, and I will embrace that within this program, knowing that it is an important initiative. It is something that this city does. We make statements about the way in which we treat our stakeholders. And this is one of those moments. So I ask you to support this. It, it, it is our reputation that's at stake here. Members, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. And uh, sorry, Deputy Lord Mayor, I missed that comment. Oh. I said you saw me. I did. I was, I was rejoicing. <laughs> I was rejoicing. What was that, Council Mayor? I'm about a foot taller Members, than Deputy Lord Mayor. Time has already started. Deputy Lord um, Mayor. I don't know why I bother talking. The one time I talk, no one takes any notice of me, Lord Mayor. God. Welcome um, to my class. No, no, no. The, the, the point I was making was that this was flawed from the beginning because there was no merit or criteria or rubric or framework applied to assess the quality of the proposals. And that is why five, as it stands, will gazette any of the applications currently in there. And so if we Members want to go back and explain to each of the 70 odd businesses why not only not only do we stuff up the administration of the project, didn't give you a closing date, not only do we do that, but actually we actually went and completely shifted the goalpost from here to over here. And by the way, go get more quotes, go do more designs, and then come back to us and oh wait, what do you know? Uh, it's closed or oversubscribed or what have you. That, so if you want to go back to those 75 businesses and explain that to them, be my guest. The problem with this, at noble aim as it is, um, uh, it, will, it, will, it will change, it will fundamentally change the delivery of the program and how everything is assessed. And that's the problem. That's the problem. You cannot just try and top up a grant scheme, but then you're not actually topping up a grant scheme, you're making a new grant scheme. Now, if you want to have a discussion about disability access and inclusion and all of that, very happy. Let's have that discussion and let's talk to the state government as this is doing about how we can, we, if I may talk, please, councillors. Sorry, it's just distracting when the next one. Um, but if you want to have a discussion about disability <laughs> access, if you want to have a discussion about dis disability access, let's do that. Very happy to do that. Um, the, the other thing as well is that it, it, it also does fundamentally alter what the scheme is doing. It's about activating shop fronts, and I'm not suggesting at all at a moment that we would that we would not want to, to activate shop fronts for people with a disability. Um, however, you're you're changing the scheme, and you're going back to the state government and saying, "Oh, we're changing the goalposts in this scheme, um, and we expect you to tip some money." And I don't think it's the way to go about it necessarily. You're sort of mangling something and, and, and taking it and making it something, trying to make it something that it's not. Um, I don't think it's really fair on the applicants that have come to me very upset and, and bemused and bewildered as to why this program has suddenly closed after like five or six business days of being open for. 
Um, and so I think it's unfair to them, but also I think it's probity issues around changing a grant program like that. Um, uh, just, just inventing new criteria on the fly there. But very happy to have subsequent discussions around disability access um, uh, and, and how we consider that as a city to make sure we're inclusive and supportive of everyone in our community. Members. Um, um, I will just make one comment before I hand back to Councillor Donovan, and that is that um, the, the grants program and the speed at which it was taken up by the city is actually a great success story. And we should be looking at this very, very positively. We did have um, a criteria without waiting, and it was really about how businesses in Adelaide can actually add to their businesses in terms of outdoor dining and improve improvements, it was an improvement program. It really was about how they look at improvements of their businesses. So this has actually been a great success program. I do note that um, improvement to accessibility is in there, absolutely, as are a whole lot of other options in terms of awnings and shades and planting and um, outdoor dining furniture, etc. So it was a, a, a bit of a, an open uh, criteria so that we could as, get as many applications as possible. I don't think any of us thought we were going to be inundated in the way that we were. It just proves the popularity. Also, has, as um, uh, Director Hill just said, sort of triggered uh, private investment um, in the city at a time where um, businesses are really looking to re-engage and bring people back to the city. So I think um, if we can all speak about this in the positive manner in which it, it should be, um, that will go a long way. Um, I'm going to go back to Councillor Donovan to sum up on the amendment. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I just make the point that this is a very different proposal to the initial grant scheme. The initial grant scheme was we have $300,000 of state government money. This decision is we are now saying the city of Adelaide is putting in $375,000 and we are seeking additional funds. Therefore, there's, there's no probity issue with us looking at the existing grant criteria of which accessibility is already included and saying we are now opting to spend an additional or, or a $375,000 given we didn't have any decision making in spending that first $300,000. We are now going to spend $375,000 on activating city frontages. One of the things that as Councillor Knoll rightly said, we have this four-year-old disability access plan of which great progress has already been made, but to suggest that we need to think of these things as different silos is absolutely ridiculous. One of the key criteria, one of the key areas that we are moving toward, attempting to move toward, have within our strategic plan is improving accessibility for all users. It's within the grant criteria already. This point simply prioritises this and it is by no means my intent to say if there's 40 additional grants that those 40 additional grants all go to improving accessibility. The reality is that improving the accessibility is incredibly expensive and so as Director Hill already pointed out to date perhaps there have been zero applications perhaps even with this additional point we will get zero additional applications pending further clarification. It's simply highlighting to the public that we are using these funds and we acknowledge the immense cost for making this improvement to activating a frontage, a street frontage. And regarding DDA compliance, of course new builds have DDA compliance, but of course, equally, old builds do not. And we all know how many old buildings there are in the city, which we love, and to do the frontage improvements to those old buildings and to do it well, so it doesn't look tacky, and to do it in a way that actually fits with the street and, and it is compliant is incredibly expensive. But we know from those businesses that do it and do it successfully, we actually encourage, we bring a whole new cohort of people into the city. And those businesses that have done it and have done it well have, have really significantly increased their patronage. So we know it's a successful strategy. We know it's incredibly expensive to do. We should be highlighting it as one of the priorities because it fits within our strategic plan, it fits within all of our other intent. And this would simply promote it and allow those uh, businesses who perhaps are considering this huge investment to get some funds from the City of Adelaide. It is so unlikely that there would be more than 10%, I'm going to pull a number out, 
um, of those additional applications that would even seek, let alone to be fulfilled. So I, I really hope that members will consider this and to endorse this, this priority so that we have the opportunity of uh, promoting this to city users and showing that we are a city for all, as we state in so much of our marketing material. Members, to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is lost. Council members, the division has been called on the amendment. Would all those in favour of the amendment please stand and remain standing until all names have been called? Councillor Martin, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Moran, Councillor Simt. So that takes us back to the... So this, that one, yeah, across our part five, and then we go back to the... That becomes the substantive, and I go back to the Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Unless any members want to speak to it, I don't think many can. So, Deputy Lord Mayor. Sum up. Sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against. Councillor Moran, are you voting? Thank you. Division. Sorry, if I could actually just check if it was unanimous. Those in favour, those against, that will be recorded as unanimous. Thank you, members. It is actually uh, eight o'clock and I wouldn't mind a short break. Um, we have three motions on notice uh, remaining. Is everybody happy to have a short break or would anybody like a longer, slightly longer break? Short break? Um, can we say, uh, members, five minutes, yeah. 10 minutes? So, okay, I'm gonna split difference. We have 10 minutes, members. I'll see you back here in 10 minutes. There are some refreshments in the Lady Esther Jacobs room.
Uh, secret. Same thing, isn't it? I'm happy to look up the definition for you, Lord Mayor. That has is a decision of council to keep these matters in confidence. Okay. Council. All right. Well, look. So uh, it has a decision of council to keep this in confidence. You say tomato, I say tomato. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, suffice to say that um, uh, I am concerned that there could be significant changes to this um, project uh, that may, in my view, impact stakeholders, uh, especially in certain parts of the city, um, and that if those things are to happen, uh, then I believe that they require council's approval. Now, the council administration's position is clear. It is that I and everybody else in this room was shown off in complex plans, flashed up on a wall, in some cases for a few seconds to a minute, and therefore I have been updated on this project. And moreover, contrary to sections 2.4, 0.1, 0.2, 0.3, 0.4, 0 .4, and 0.5 of the project delivery agreement, um, the administration is saying that you, Councillor Martin, and all of your colleagues uh, have no right to have a say. Uh, that's made clear in six in the administration response where it's asserted that the authority for this rests entirely with the CEO. Now, I formally asked the CEO in the meeting on the 27th of August, as is my right under section three of the Local Government Act, for paper copies of the progress plans and the financial arrangements. And that request has not been fulfilled. That request has not been fulfilled. So uh, here we are where the administration is saying, well, you've had all you're going to get, and this is a matter of the CEO. Now, I want to say, uh, as is well known to my colleagues, I'm not a fan of this project. Um, I fear it will do irreparable harm to the central market, but I am not challenging the project. I accept the majority view that they want it to go ahead, um, and uh, that um, even though I disagree, um, I will agree to it going ahead, but I want to do what I think is my responsibility in, in terms of due diligence. And I'm saying that uh, issues from my point of view, major issues that are in the public realm about car parking, about overshadowing, about traffic management, about construction management are issues for me Councilor, that ought to come back. Do you require extra time? I have uh, one sentence that I wish to deliver. Thank you. Uh, and it is that I ask uh, members of this council to assert their right to approve this project rather than abrogate that responsibility because there will be consequences later on if it doesn't go well. Councillor Mackey, did you wish to speak? Um, CEO, did you wish to speak? Yeah, it's really lovely. I just need to clarify a couple of things with you. Um, um, I've been advised there is no material change to the project development agreement um, and uh, specifically our returnable works. Further to that, I just want to be really clear that you understand that in November last year, you authorised that the CEO be delegated authority to finalise the negotiation and preparation of the project delivery agreement on satisfactory terms for execution, etc. So I'm fulfilling that delegated authority that you provided to me. If council wishes to seek clarification, if it wishes as a council to require information, happy to take that direction from council. But I'm working within the delegated authority you provided me expressly. Seems. So just to clarify, uh, CEO, if uh, this motion was carried, would this then be, uh, would you regard that as rescinding your delegated authority? Is that um, what you're saying, or is it that this motion is in effect ultra virus because of a previous decision? CEO? Through you, Lord Mayor, I may need to take advice on that, but my reading is yes, um, because you've provided me delegated authority to progress, um, but now with this motion it's seeking a formal vote um, of council. So yes, it, it contradicts what's previously been provided. Members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Well, look, I, uh, Lord Mayor, I have to agree with the administration. It is there, it says 2.4. Council has the right to object to the application. That is what goes forward to SCAP. 
if it considers that application is inconsistent with the principal design or constitutes material variation, being a variation. And all of the circumstances are outlined below. Now I'm saying, uh, my view is that circumstances are such that the council has the authority to say, we wish to review this, we wish to see it here in council. Now, if we don't exercise that authority, then we are by implication saying, everything's tickety-boo. We're absolutely happy about it. Now, I put it to you that there are matters which I cannot discuss about which your stakeholders will be concerned about and will say to you in a year or two, why did you let that happen? Why did you agree to it? Now, you might then say, well, no, I didn't know that was going to happen. But I say to you, you do know that this is your chance. This is your only chance to say, let me have a look at this. And the, the consequence of that might not be you say, oh, I don't like this at all. Oh, I don't want it to proceed. It might be, oh, OK, I feel OK. This is reasonable. I'm happy for it to proceed. But what you're doing, if you vote against this, is saying, no, nope, I don't want that right. I do not want you to ask me if this is still OK. That's exactly what you'll be doing. Now, I know, Lord Mayor, that this has been predetermined, that there will be a vote against this. Uh, I accept that, but I think it is not the right approach with what is the biggest project this council has ever taken, possibly the biggest construction project in the city, possibly uh, the tallest tower in the city. And this, this council is going to say, it's all tickety-boo, let it go. Let's give it the green light. Okay. Um, I do not believe that this is predetermined, Councillor Martin. We're all in here together. Members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Well, that is lost. Thank you, members. We go to uh, 15.9, uh, social and affordable housing. Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move the motion as printed and seek a second. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Lord Mayor, can I start by thanking administration for the work that they're doing on the. the um, uh, on the social and affordable housing policy that is yet to come before council. <laughs> I know that the work is under uh, underway. Um, but uh, my motion doesn't really speak to any social housing. It uh, purely focuses on, uh, on affordable housing. And uh, I'll say that the majority of, uh, of that meet, if you will, is in uh, uh, point four. Um, to, uh, to give... Um, uh, yourself, Lord Mayor, and the, and the Chamber, a bit of an idea of uh, how this has come about. I would just like to use uh, my own experiences uh, uh, here uh, for this motion. Ten years ago, as a, a young graduate, I bought my first uh, uh, first time. As a young graduate, you don't know, get paid a, a lot of uh, a lot of money, uh, and uh, I really wanted to move into the city because I like the city lifestyle. I could go to the pub, I could go to the bar, and at the end of the night, I could stumble through. That was a, that was a great thing uh, uh, for me as a you know, 21, 22 year old. <laughs> um, but I couldn't, because uh, uh, the, the houses here in the city uh, weren't affordable. They weren't in my price range. Um, now, here we are 10 years later, I understand affordable housing a little bit better. Uh, kind of work in the space. Uh, and I know that um, to be eligible for affordable housing, as a, as a single person, uh, you need to be earning um, uh, $80,000 a year. If you're a couple, you need to be earning a maximum of $110,000 a year. So uh, there, there are those, uh, those criteria. Now, who is that? They're young professionals, they're young couples, uh, young families who, uh, who want to move into the city, possibly because um, they work in the city. So they can work, walk to work, they spend less time uh, commuting, uh, they've got uh, uh, great cafes and, uh, and, and shops and retail places at their doorsteps. Um, these might even be workers that might be working at Lot 14. They might be teachers that might be teaching at one of the many schools. Might be nurses, police officers, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, but uh, I'd, I'd just like to uh, finish on this point, Lord Mayor. We want to try and um, 
uh, attract this sort of crowd into, uh, into the city of Adelaide to, to boost our population, but also for them to support our traders. Again, I know I've been banging on about this, but COVID has hit our businesses hard, and I would like, uh, and I would like to make this a reality so that uh, uh, these uh, these residents can support our businesses, and those businesses can survive. We don't necessarily have to uh, rely on the on the number of visitors that come into uh, come into the city. Um, I look forward to uh, uh, to the discussion and uh, endorse this motion to the chamber. Thank you, Councillor Abraham. Today, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Uh, Councillor Sims. Thanks very much, Lord Mayor. Uh, just a few questions. Um, I'm just keen to understand from administration how what Councillor Abrahimzada has proposed uh, interacts with the work that is already being undertaken. Uh, because my understanding is that uh, all of this work was being done um, in relation to both social and affordable housing as part of the uh, policy work that um, is being commissioned. So is this something uh, additional? And, and if so, can they clarify? See you. Thanks, Ian. Can you respond? Well, um, through the law, Ben. Um, look, I think this is a fairly integrated piece of work. We're doing um, quite a lot of work on um, social, affordable, and to be honest, residential growth as a, as a broader concept, given the impacts of COVID and um, the, the likely impacts of what a, a normal return to work scenario looks like for the city. Um, so there's, there's a fair bit of detailed work going on in this space, um, both internally and talking to some other external departments as referenced in the, uh, in the motion. And, and is this kind of work in terms of the, the kind that Councillor Abraham Zitter has um, proposed also being done in relation to social housing as part of the policy work? The purpose of the workshop on the 20th is we'll, we will go into a fair bit of detail into um, the social, affordable and residential growth agendas. Just so there's a real clear uh, understanding across the elected body and within administration around the different streams, the different mechanisms, and the different types of models. Would uh, Councillor Abraham Sitter's um, motion through you, Lord Mayor, and to administration have the effect of um, nullifying the focus on social housing in the eyes of administration, or is your view that uh, both matters are still, are still looked at? See you. Yeah, through Lord Mayor, I can answer that. No, I don't think it would compromise it in any way. Oh, great. Well, on that basis, I'm very happy to uh, support it. Um, it certainly sounds like it's consistent with the work that's already um, in train. I, I do agree with uh, Councillor Abraham that we do need to um, do what we can um, to provide more affordable housing options for um, people. There are lots of benefits that flow from living in the city. Um, we know them all um, too well, um, those of us that live in the city, um, but also we know as city councillors um, a lot of the benefits that um, come from being uh, locally um, and um, it's a, a good lifestyle and certainly very keen to provide opportunities for people to be able to break into the market and to look at what council can do to encourage that. Looking, uh, of course, also at the role that we can play in terms of encouraging social housing too, recognising that homelessness is a growing uh, problem in the city and one that we have a responsibility to uh, try and address and, and show leadership on. Um, but uh, with those comments, I'm very happy to support this. Thank you. Members, if not, I'll go back to... Sorry, Deputy Law. Nearly. I saw you because... You went, oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, it's over the table. It's like, I'm um, going to get you a little uh, bell or something. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor, and thank you to Councillor Abraham today for bringing this um, uh, to us. I think I think there's real uh, opportunity here. Obviously, we need more uh, social and affordable housing, um, affordable housing, particularly in the city, and this is what that addresses. However, um, uh, the real opportunity here, I think, is to also enliven some economic growth as well. Um, and then uh, once we've got people into the city, I use that residential uh, owner-occupier base to underpin our own economic development within the city, supporting our businesses, our local businesses. Um, what I think is really exciting about this is that we're actually engaging the sector um, and we're engaging government um, to see what can be done. Um, I would be really, really hopeful uh, if ideas are put forward, uh, such as uh, from the city's perspective, rate relief, from the state government's perspective, uh, potential for stamp duty relief, um, and any other taxes that may be, may be considered. I think those are the policy levers that we've got um, at our disposal. 
um, and I really hope we could consider pulling on those levers uh, to see what sort of growth we could see within the city. Uh, I think that's really exciting. Um, I also want to thank you, Lord Mayor, because I know we've had discussions about this um, uh, previously, and I think it's an excellent initiative that carries on some of the work that the city has done previously with the previous state government. Um, uh, so I think it's really exciting. I'm really pleased to see what comes of it. Thank you. And uh, in terms of policy, I know in my discussions with Councillor Abraham today, we're also looking at the minimum requirements and uh, and also the timing. So I think that would be great things for us to have a look at in, in this uh, request. So um, members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Abraham today to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Yes, you're quite right in terms of requirements. There is currently a guideline of 15%. It is a guideline, it's not a minimum requirement. Uh, you can take that with a, a pinch of salt or a punch of salt. Uh, there's also timing in terms of uh, how long a, a property remains on the, on the market uh, to those who are eligible um, uh, uh, as, a, as a first home buyer. And I think uh, the timing currently is, uh, is 30 days. So uh, these are the, the sorts of things that I, uh, um, that I hope we can explore further. And, and other incentives as the DLM uh, highlighted, whether if it's uh, taxation levers, fees, charges, uh, whether it's fast tracking um, uh, development applications or uh, whatever it might be. Don't want to speculate or forecast what might or might not be, uh, but uh, that's the intention of the motion to go and explore uh, uh, what we can and cannot do. Beautiful, thank you. Members, to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. That takes us to 15.10, Councillor Martin, electronic meetings and standing orders. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, do you wish me to read the motion or are you happy? No, to I'd look for a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Now, look, um, I have proposed this um, because it seems to me that there are uh, no decisions which have passed through this chamber in terms of the management of Zoom meetings or means uh, electro electronic means. Um, the administration says, for example, in its response to this motion, that um, uh, the audio management um, of Zoom meetings is, um, is something that we shouldn't worry about, a bit like the old Joe Bjorki Peterson saying, Queensland Premier, who used to say, don't you worry about that, don't you worry about that. Um, well, all we have is a decision of the administration that this is how it will be done. It hasn't come to this chamber. Um, additionally, um, the decision about who gets the audio is determined by the presiding member. And I do not believe that is the case in other local government areas or at other levels of government. And what this seeks to do is to ask uh, the administration provide advice about that. Um, I also want to know um, about guidance on what are suitable locations for meetings. And the Deputy Lord Mayor should prick up his ears because I do think it's inappropriate <laughs> that a meeting should be chaired from the electoral officers or the Canberra officers of the federal Liberal MHR Nicole Flint. Um, to me, that sends a message to our stakeholders, that is not appropriate. Equally, as it wouldn't be appropriate if another councillor, if another councillor decided that we would have our meetings from the offices of the Flat Earth Society. All of those things actually say something about this council. They say something about us. And that is something that ought to be considered. Council ought to say, well, these are our acceptable premises. And council has an expectation in regard to security that when you are in that environment where you're taking part in that confidential discussion, there has to be some certainty that what is being discussed is being heard by your ears and your ears alone. Because some of that, some of that secret stuff or confidential stuff as you prefer to call it, Lord Mayor, involves hundreds of millions of dollars. And yet we're absolutely silent on that. There's nothing in our rules about that. Um, additionally, um, I think that the scheduling of toilet breaks, which becomes a, a pressing issue for many of our members on occasion during meetings, the scheduling of breaks is something that is not considered. Uh, it is, as the administration says, left entirely to the, the chair of the meeting, who
whose bladder uh, or uh, eating and drinking habits might be quite different to the rest of the members of this chamber and who may elect to press ahead when other members may think differently. Now, these matters that I talk about, that is scheduled breaks, are quite common throughout industry, throughout government. They are mandated, particularly where there are electronic meetings. So I ask the members to support an investigation not necessarily a set of rules, just an investigation. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And um, look, I, I'm supportive um, of this. And one of the main reasons that I'm supportive is point two, the use of hybrid technology to allow elected members willing to attend town hall for electronic meetings to do so, so yeah, do so in number in the Colonel Library. I see that potentially as having um, a long-term benefit uh, to the Council. We don't know, um, Lord Mayor, how much longer we're going to be living with uh, this pandemic. It is possible that we will have situations in you know, the months and years ahead of the remainder of this Council that uh, where a member is feeling unwell and it's not advisable for them to uh, be able to attend or they may be in quarantine because they've had to travel with work. Um, indeed, I know people are going through that process at the moment that are um, coming to and from Parliament and other places. In those circumstances, rather than having the whole meeting on Zoom, I think it would be appropriate for Council to have the technology to allow that member to appear um, remotely. Indeed, the Parliament has made those changes recently so that members of Parliament from Victoria can uh, still engage in the, uh, the National Parliament. And just this week, they had uh, the first ever uh, remote parliament session where you saw members of all political parties um, appearing remotely because they were in quarantine or for any reason. So I think that would actually be a really good, um, a really good uh, option for us to consider. Um, the, the use of hybrid technology to allow elected members willing to attend electronic meetings to do so, um, willing to attend town hall for meetings to do so in the Colonel Library. So yeah, something that gave us the opportunity to have, you're, you're not picking up what I'm putting down, Lord. No, 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 I was, I was just a little bit confused because the, the hybrid one I get, but the other one seemed to be contradictory to what Councillor Martin was just saying in terms of not allowing members to attend meetings from remote access locations. Oh, when, I'm, when I'm talking about remote location, what I mean is outside of town hall. I don't mean somebody working interstate, uh, working for a member of parliament. Um, I'm talking about a situation where somebody might be quarantined uh, because um, they're uh, dealing with a cold or flu and have been told they shouldn't come to a meeting. Am I speaking some no, of that's that fine. sense? I thought that's Far so away. I mean, most workplaces um, are, are dealing with uh, these challenges at the moment. I think it makes sense for us to put in place some mechanisms to deal with it. Um, and to give a practical example, you know, everybody is being told if you're feeling unwell or have a cold or flu, don't come to a meeting. Um, in those circumstances, I'm not sure what an elected member is expected to, to do here in town hall. Um, if you don't turn up, you're disenfranchised. And uh, this way, at least there's a mechanism for someone to dial in. Um, so look, I'm supportive of it uh, on that basis. I think it also makes sense to look at all the other issues um, that have been um, uh, ventilated through uh, Councillor Kira's motion previously. Thank you. Members, Deputy Lord Mayor. In the flesh. In the flesh. Um, Lord Mayor, I just have a couple of questions. Uh, just a couple of questions. The first one being um, noting that so when we're talking about the, the admin comments, very detailed for the standing orders and what have you, and that's great. Basically, renders one done. Um, but uh, at, at two, when we're talking about the use of technology, there's very little discussion around um, what that may actually mean necessarily. <coughs> if uh, there are ultimately varying kinds of technology go for as far as conferencing facilities and what have you. Um, I recall uh, per one of my motions we looked at, at changes, uh, audio visual changes that would have to happen to this room which is a heritage room for example. Um, does administration recall the costs, the sort of order of quantum that we're dealing with when we're talking about audio and visual upgrades to a heritage room like this one or the Colonel Light room? Uh, 
CEO. That's through Lord Mayor. No, I don't really recall the actual costs. I don't think it's been finalised at this time, but it is problematic because of the heritage layer of these rooms, mm. and that does significantly add to the cost. But I must say, we're in the process of reviewing and looking at alternatives at the moment. Uh, I was hoping you would remember. I remember it was in excess of 150000 to undertake that work, which I think Rudy was on that working group and he's nodding. Um, uh, so, uh, so I think that I just think that needs to be um, a point of mind. Um, look, I'll just speak briefly to this. Um, obviously, if Councillor Martin just wanted an opportunity to, to attack me, he can attack me whenever he wants, however he wants. Um, he doesn't need to bring a motion to do it. Um, he's, he's never needed that trigger in the past. But um, look, that's fine. My work ethic uh, isn't in question here. Uh, what is in question is the, the actual need for this motion um, at all. I mean, the admin comment is very clear and outlines quite precisely how all uh, the standing order changes and amendments have been adopted. It talks about how we're already using a best practice in line um, with the local government association guidelines and the conduct um, of these meetings. So I don't think. Um, there's really any issue there. Uh, ultimately, uh, what this motion comes down to is trying to limit members, um, uh, but also trying to invent a problem uh, that doesn't exist and propose a solution for it. Um, I think this motion is seeking to address things that were addressed from the get-go. And when we're thinking about confidence, I remember quite clearly, Councillor Martin may be a little bit lax with com confidence based on his interpretation of it, but I remember quite clearly we were told um, uh, that we must be uh, somewhere where no one else is able to be privy to the proceedings that are occurring <coughs> on our device and no one is able to hear that that is a requirement under the local government act it's a requirement under our standing orders and the administration made it quite clear and i would encourage council martin to revisit that advice if he's having problems with it the administration made it quite clear that that still stands um, uh, so i don't think um, we need to address that um, and if that is the uh, uh, the pinnacle of problems as far as where people are appearing from, once you've got that covered, it doesn't really matter where you're appearing from, um, does it? So, uh, look, I, I do agree with the need um, to update our technology, but I don't think that's the spirit with which this motion was brought. Um, the mover was opposed uh, to using Zoom at all, um, and this is just just a means to try and limit its uh, utility to us, probably in the hopes that we'll one day abandon it. What I wish to see us do, um, and I will be voting against this, but in the longer term, we need to we need to be pushing towards a remote participation meetings for some or all members as they see fit. That's what our governments all around the world are doing. Um, they're able to conduct meetings. That's what board meetings, uh, that's how they're conducted. Um, because ultimately, when you have uh, high caliber people, they're not guaranteed to be in the one local government area uh, every week, every week, uh, uh, for, for every week bar, bar the summer break. Um, and so, and that's one of the failings, I think, of local government in South Australia. It actually confines people. It's actually the purview of the wealthy and the retired, those who do not need to work or those who have ceased their working life. Um, and I'm neither, I'm neither of those things, but, um, and I think that's something we need to rectify. But I'll leave it there, Lord Mayor. I think the motion speaks for itself. I'm sorry. Um, members, <clears throat> did anyone else want to speak to that? <laughs> If not, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Now, look, uh, I understand that as the faction leader has now spoken, that is the end of the matter. Oh. But I will have. I will Councillor have. Martin, that was both improper and insulting and well, beneath you. So if you could insulting. actually, well, I think it is. And if you could actually, you know, sum up on your motion, that would be great. Well, uh, Lord Mayor, let me just say that uh, the Deputy Lord Mayor telling everyone here that he can't see the reason why we need to have this approved is a very good reason why you should approve it. And yes, I did see the gesture from Councillor Kira down there. Um, I do, um, I, look, it's all right, I'm used to his outrageous behaviour at the last meeting, we had another illustration of it. But look, let's move on, Lord Mayor. Let me deal with this matter um, without the, uh, noting the behaviour of Councillor Kira. Um, this, uh, this proposal is about addressing what are serious concerns. 
Now, I'm not leaping forward to um, the world that the Deputy Lord Mayor unveils, where we're all in the Caribbean or some other location attending a council meeting, remote from our ratepayers, remote from all of the decision making. It is hard enough at this time when we're sitting in the Colonel Lightroom and the CEO and his team are sitting in another room just down the corridor and they bring up a conversation about a map and you can't see it. In fact, you've got to hold up your own map to the camera and sort of point out what you're talking about. This is not technology that allows that. And nor is the principle that we should all be somewhere else and because we're high flyers, nor is that principle one that's endorsed by anybody I know. But quite simply, the rules as they exist are inadequate. They are not sufficient. They allow for meetings from Liberal Party officers. Uh, they could allow for a meeting from the Office of Extinction Rebellion or they could allow for a meeting for the, the property council. Absolutely, Lord Mayor. There is nothing in those rules that prevent anyone in this room from being wherever they want, so long as you're satisfied and the CEO is satisfied, it's a secure environment. Now, that is not enough. It's not guidance, uh, I think, that's adequate for uh, local government and particularly for the foremost lo local government in South Australia. But additionally, the rules uh, don't provide for uh, elected members to speak at will as they do now, particularly to put forward uh, motions related to, for example, matters being put, matters laying on the table. No, those things can't be put at that moment. They rely on your indulgence and the presiding member uh, uh, or the presiding officer's indulgence at the time it's put. Now, Lord Mayor, there are a dozen other things I could note. Um, I am out of time, I acknowledge that, and I'm also uh, out of any support. Members. Sorry, sorry, Lord Mayor, can we have a point of clarification? Which uh, is? Uh, I, as I understand it, you can't actually put the two sorts of motions that Councillor Martin suggested in committee. No, we can't. No. Okay. Um, which was which is when I actually read that at the moment we we are only using Zoom for committee and workshops, not for council, and you can't put forward motions. I, I beg to differ, Lord Mayor. A, a formal motion can be put at committee, and I look to the administration and through you. I will to ask for um, governance to uh, comment on that. No formal motions at the committee on the decision of the council on the 10th of December 2019 that the only decision making body is council. So, that, so the that, only thing, sorry, one exception being a formal motion to adjourn the meeting. Thank you. That's exactly the point that I make. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Mayor, Lord Mayor, it is, it is, it is not the only motion. It is not the only motion. I'm sorry, Councillor Martin, if you would like Further time, I will answer the chamber. It but is, it is not quite enjoying it. So, it no, is not, it I'm is sorry. not the only motion. Okay, thank you. Do you require further time because yeah. your time is no, finished. no. I'm asking you a question. What are the other motions? No, I'm that sorry. Put... No, I'm sorry, but I think you asked a question and it was answered. Well, uh, uh, there are other motions. I know what they are. Do you? You ask the question of governance, no, and I governance asks the right. question through the chair, not to the chair, to through the chair to governance, who well, answered the question. Asked and answered. Members to the vote. Uh, those in favour? Those against? Provision. Sorry, we missed the numbers. Those in favour? No, no, no. So, sorry, governance missed the numbers. Those in favour, my apologies, those in favour, those against, that is lost. Oh, uh, members, I do have one motion without notice. Oh, division, sorry, my apologies. Council members, the division has been called on the motion. All those in favour of the motion, please stand and remain standing till all names have been called. Councillor Martin, Councillor Mackey, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Sims. Members, I have uh, before one motion without notice from the Deputy Lord Mayor. 
Um, Lord Mayor, I did I did ask for this to be circulated beforehand. I'm not sure if it was though. It was. Did, it, was. It, was. it was. And okay. members to that, uh, the reason I accepted it is because of the time frame that would be required for this motion to be delivered. Um, uh, and we have it taken as We'll take it as read and I'll look for a seconder. Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, okay. Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, just very briefly, uh, I suppose um, with, uh, with uh, crisis comes opportunity as well. Um, uh, it's unfortunate that the state will not be able to benefit uh, to the tune of $45 million as far as an uptick to um, uh, our domestic product that the Superloop 500 will bring. Um, However, the opportunity in all of this is that one of our prime parks in the parklands, uh, being Victoria Park and some of its surrounds as well, uh, will be available for community use um, and potentially for use uh, for other activations as well over the warm months. Um, as we all know, uh, people are effectively locked out of this park uh, for many months of the year, uh, not able to use it um, and not able to not able to use it casually as far as dog walkers, as you highlighted this week, Lord Mayor, and, and other casual users, recreational users, but also it's a prime event space that is no uh, that is not accessible um, uh, to others who might want to put on something that takes a little less time to set up uh, and pack down as well. So uh, that's the spirit with which I brought this, um, uh, chatting to some people in the community. Some of the businesses are upset uh, to see that they're losing uh, something that brings in around 200,000 people into that part of the city. Um, uh, nevertheless, uh, I think there's opportunity for us to see what other uh, possible activations we can bring to this park. So you could potentially um, have something uh, on the track, um, whether it's you know cycling events, you could do cycling lessons even, um, uh, you know, solar cars use it um, uh, quite occasionally as well, um, or other sporting events making use of the space, uh, but potentially uh, cultural events um, as well. You could uh, set up a, a makeshift uh, stage and, and make use of the grandstand. Think, uh, think the Victoria Park equivalent of uh, a Greek amphitheatre on, on a balmy night. Um, uh, that's what you could have uh, in summer, um, enjoying the outside space and of course acknowledging the outside space is all the rage at the moment uh, with COVID restrictions and what have you. It could also um, allow for uh, parts of the fringe to expand as necessary. Um, if their current allocations are not COVID safe, uh, we wouldn't want to see um, uh, that landmark event in our calendar um, damaged by uh, requirements to have a certain amount of space. So it allows for a little bit of flexibility there as well. But I figure cast the net wide, um, uh, see what the community come back with and see what um, uh, other institutions in South Australia come back with. And this could be uh, something exciting uh, that we could all be part of uh, and our community can be a part of over the summer months. Thank you. Councillor Abraham, did you wish to speak? Uh, yeah, great motion. I commend the chamber. Members? Councillor Martin and then oh, yeah, Councillor Sims. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Oh, thank you. Gentlemen. Um, look, just a question, Lord Mayor. Uh, first, uh, about your consideration of this. You said that because of the time issue, you'd accept this. But is there anything in this? It, that standing orders wouldn't prevent it being raised in any case as a motion without notice? Sorry, I'm not sure I understand the question. You said and that I'm... you agreed to accept this on the basis that it was time sensitive. I'm saying to you, I'm seeking guidance from you about what there is in this motion that would otherwise preclude it being accepted by you as a motion without notice. So, in the standing orders at number 228, mm -hmm. uh, motions without notice should be limited matters that are time sensitive, would not require input from the administration to inform the decision making or the expenditure of funds. So, this is this is in spite of all of those three things, is that what you're saying, or just the time sensitive issues? No, because it is time sensitive that I have accepted it. Okay, fine. Okay. Um, now, look, uh, I don't have a, a particular problem with this, um, uh, uh, except to note um, for the Deputy Lord Mayor's information that I've been contacted by ratepayers who are absolutely delighted that they have access to the parklands for much of the summer period. Um, and while uh, the Superloop uh, 500 may bring economic benefit to the city, 
which I note is a declining economic benefit. Uh, witness the complaints of accommodation providers during the last Superloop that trade was down about 25% on the previous year. Um, despite the economic benefit, um, there is a benefit in people not being locked out of sections of the parklands for four or five, or as was the case originally, six months, uh, simply because the state government, and it was the previous state government, I add for the Deputy Lord Mayor's attention, since his ears pricked, it was the previous state government which declined to spend the money which would have allowed the event to bump in and bump out in such a short period of time, or a much shorter period of time. So, you know, it's a nice thing that people have their parklands back, and we don't necessarily have to feverishly search for events, which in any case may well be uh, at, at cost to other businesses and enterprises in the city, to which people would turn because there is no other uh, uh, means of spending their money. So, look, you know, I'm not going to oppose it, but uh, I'm grateful that the parklands have been returned to more people in uh, in Adelaide. Um, Member of the Council seems. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Just a, a question for administration. Um, given this is a motion without notice, we don't have the benefit of administration's. Um, assessment in terms of the number of hours that this would take uh, to do the report. I'm assuming it would be substantial work there based on the previous uh, estimations provided tonight. It is um, the CEO through you, Lord Mayor, able to let us know how many hours this will take? 40 hours, 100 hours, or any sense of how long it might be? CEO, would you care to answer that um, question? Three, Lord Mayor. Look, it's not not easy to predict, but I'd imagine it'd be under 20 hours. Under 20. To, to investigate Thank you. I think, I think the question's been answered, Councillor Sims. Look, it is a significant uh, time investment, um, Lord Mayor. Um, it may well be more um, than that. Okay. Um, time, time will tell. Um, look, I, I have similar um, concerns to uh, um, Councillor Martin around this in that I don't buy this narrative that says that Victoria Park is some kind of wasteland, you know, with tumbleweeds blowing through. It is actually... Councillors, can the councillor seems just speaking? Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'm certainly not suggesting that that is the view that has been posited by anybody on this council, but there are some in the community that have viewed Victoria Park with ambitious eyes and thought, great, you know, let's move in and activate, um, activate that space under the guise of activation. Um, and I don't, uh, I don't buy uh, the narrative that says that it is not currently used. It is a space that is used and enjoyed by many, many people um, in uh, the community. Um, and it's a, pay, a, a space of passive recreation, but it's also used for sport, exercise um, and the like. But look, I'm not going to stand in the way of an investigation because I would assume that what administration um, comes back with uh, will be consistent with um, this council's um, approach. And I, I note from the CEO's comments, it will be 20 hours. I suspect it will be a much longer um, piece of work, um, but I'm happy to uh, support the investigating this uh, to indulge the, uh, the whims of the, uh, the Deputy uh, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Yes, certainly. Through you, Lord Mayor, I just need to clarify. The resolution as presented doesn't require a report back to Council. It just literally asks us to investigate and consider opportunities. If they can be addressed and progressed operationally, then we will. But if it does require a Council resolution, then we would report back. And the 20 hours is, is, is an estimate. It could be more, could be less. Thank you, Members. Um, just given that uh, actually currently it's being used as a COVID testing station, so it is excluding many people going into the park. Um, and there's also uh, the discussion is that the move of the Superloop will be to October, which means we may have um, future summers available to us. So I think it would be good to test and trial some new things in terms of what the, um, what the use of the park, um, particularly over the summer period, might be. Um, if there's no other comments, I'll go back to Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I'm, I'm, I'm very touched by the support that I think I'm going to receive. Um, 
uh, from the council chamber. Of course, if councillor Sims cared about administration comments, he might never put a motion again. Based on how they come back. Um, uh, but um, uh, look, I do, I do take, I do take uh, the point, and, and and it is a wonderful park. It is a wonderful park as it is. Um, and I'm not envisaging uh, some temporary Taj Mahal whacked up and torn down. Um, uh, something, uh, well, I think this opens it up for a program of, of smaller events, um, uh, more interesting events, I suppose, appealing rather to a, a large group of people or lots of little events that appeal to various segments of the community. The opportunities are endless here is what I'm saying. Um, uh, and so very pleased to see what the administration can come up with and the ideas that the community has as well. Thank you. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Yes. Yes, Councillor Martin, what would you like to move? I'm sorry if I asked, but you were looking like you were going to close the meeting. I was about to close the meeting, Councillor Thank Martin. You. Um, I would like to move, uh, go slowly or quickly? <laughs> Well, I'm no. not typing, Councillor okay. Martin. Um, I would like to move that Council acknowledges and thanks those elected members who have made full disclosures on the most recent register of interests, providing more detail than previously. I'm thanking members for providing the detail they have on the most recent register I, of interest. I don't think that that is a required. I will not be accepting that motion without notice. And that is Councillor Martin just taking the. Not going to say it. Mickey, out of the council proceedings. Members, I will close the meeting. Thank you very much. Um, and I will see you at the next meeting.